Welcome in, everybody, back to Goblets and Warlots, episode one of our charity event, uh, Shadow or Shadows of the Soul Flats. Uh, this is our yearly uh, ch annual charity, charity, Jesus, words are already hard, annual year charity event for Breast Cancer Research Foundation. So tonight, what we have in store for you is uh, we have a couple giveaways. Um, what, a constant giveaway is $50 or more donation. I'll s mail you a Goblet and Warlock sticker and up to four the fancy pink bracelets that they have. Um, or for, uh, for uh, stateside only. But if you live outside the United States, I'll just send you a couple stickers from our merch shop. It's a lot easier and a lot cheaper for me to do so. Sorry about that. Uh, tonight we are doing the giveaway for Loot Studios. A uh, pack of your choice. All you will have to be here at the end of the stream to be uh, to claim your uh, reward. And what I'll need from you is your uh, email for your account for Loot Studios, and then I can get you whatever pack of your choice. Uh, Loot Studios, uh, they are a 3D SDL printing company um, that you can get uh, SDL files monthly for. And uh, if you have a 3D printer or know somebody your 3D printer, uh, you can print whatever you want from whatever pack you want. That would be tonight's giveaway. Our next uh, episode, next Wednesday, will either have Car will be a Carlac or Shadow Heart giveaway for one tenth scale. I was showing flyers on the starting screen for them uh, by t uh, Tor. How do you say it? Torta mi Mini Minis. Uh, Torita, Torita, Torita. Torita Minion Mini Miniatures. So, got her uh, consent to do these giveaways. So. I think it's a her, maybe. I don't know. I just, I just emailed somebody. So, uh, but the, yeah, I got their permission to do the giveaways, so we're good there on that front as well. So, uh, but yeah, this car. I guess I'll just show them, right? I guess I'll just re-show them again. So next week would be the giveaways for either uh, Carlac or Shadow Heart, um, unpainted, uh, so you can paint them how you were. Let's go. Russell, resubscribe. Thank you for the subscription. Don't give, don't subscribe to me. Give away to the charity event. That's what we're here for. Uh, let's see. Anything else I'm missing? But thank you, Wessel, for the subscription. Uh, yeah. Um, I'll just turn it over to my co-host, uh, Zold. Uh, uh, co-host, co-DM. Uh, about to start streaming soon, right? Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm a sold. Um, yeah, I've been playing in Jukin's games for a couple of years now, and he asked me to to co-host with this or co-DM with this, and I'm excited. I get to um, let out my creative creepy side. Um, should be fun. Um, yeah, and I am going to be venturing into the world of streaming very shortly. So it could crash and fail, but who knows? It'll be fun. Thanks, Jukin. Yep. Uh, Silver Wolf. Hi, I'm Silver Wolf. I stream usually on Fridays, but I haven't in a while because due to my health. Otherwise, I would be streaming for this as well. But thank you all for coming for and doing this charity event. It means a lot to us, and it means a lot to you. Thank you guys. Again. Uh, creepy ghost from behind her is me doing that all night. So, alrighty, we have Nilish. Hello, hello. I'm Nilish. Um. You can't recognize me under this mask right now, but yes, this this is me. I'm, I'm the one talking right now. <laughs> Up here in this corner. Um, uh, I'm Simi and a hiatus of streaming, but I do do a lot of um, video games and lately uh, retro-based ones, mostly PlayStation 2 games nonstop. But um, also, obviously, a uh, cosplayer and D&D enthusiast. And that's about all I have to say. All right. Uh, new addition to the stream is Summit Forgery. Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for joining us in the charity stream. Um, stream on Twitch. I'm living in the woods selling D&D &D goods. Usually I'm on every weekday, but I'm on a hiatus because we're uh, we're moving, but lots to look forward to. And uh, yeah, pretty fresh to D&D, &D, so I'm, you know, 
I make the stuff, but I don't get to play much, so I'm really looking forward to this. Um, my co-worker, Zach? You're muted. Your headset somewhere. Hey, thanks for stopping by, guys. My name's Zach. Uh, welcome to the stream. Nerd Holla! Hi, I'm Nerd. Uh, I stream typically Monday, Wednesday, Friday, painting minis, occasionally playing video games, and I run a bi-weekly game on Tuesday nights for D&D. And the man, the myth, the legend, Cleansing Rain. Uh, thank you for that. Cleansing Rain here. Uh, haven't really streamed independently for a little while, although uh, two of the party members here for this event are members in a short-term campaign I've been doing that resumes at the early mid-November, 11-11, will be when we resume Act 2 of our campaign called The Nightmare Before Oz. Other than that, uh, very excited to be playing with this group of people as we investigate the spooky things that await this holiday season. And thanks for having us. Make sure to Find a little bit of that charity in your hearts for the BCRF Foundation so that we can, uh, you know, work to spend our money for the best things possible. Appreciate that, guys. I appreciate it. All you guys are dressing up for your characters. Like I said, it was not a requirement. Uh, I just know some people like doing it. So anyway, uh, that being said, uh, yes, uh, please. Uh, uh, last year, we set a goal for a thousand we hit that goal, so this year made it 2,000. Uh, if you, like I said, if you scan the QR code on the screen, it takes you to uh, pages, a uh, couple pages of the event info and the tier list. So for every time we hit one, something happens. So make sure you uh, do that. That being said, let's get into tonight's episode. And uh, so grab your goblet, sit back, and relax.
All right, Isolde, take it away. All right, hi everyone. So what I wanted to do was I just wanted to read a little bit to give you an idea of what the setting of this campaign is and just to get you in the field for the mood. A little bit also, a little bit of history about what happened in the last one as well. So the world of Vedas is an ancient um, world worn with the scars of gods and men alike. It's a land where history has bled into myth and myth into legend, where the truth lies buried beneath centuries of whispered stories around hearths and taverns. You find yourselves south of Yeldravia, a town that was once teetering on the edge of ruin, beset by a terror that attacked its people, werewolves. Eight months ago, salvation came in the form of a band of brave adventurers. They ventured into the cursed woods to the north, seeking the source of this lycanthropy. In the heart of that haunted forest, they found something far worse than wolves. They uncovered an ancient evil, an imprisoned goddess named Etha, trapped within a hollowed roots of a withered tree. Etha's power was the root of the corruption, her curse spreading out to taint the land. The adventurers fought her, weakened her, and though she escaped, she has remained in hiding ever since. The town, for now, is safe. Though the relief was short-lived, as the townsfolk's spirits are slowly being whittled away when they look north towards the forest and they see blood occasionally raining from the sky, staining the forest floor and the nettles on the trees. And if they listen closely, they can hear the faint sounds of a man screaming in agony. Those adventurers formed the Order of the Goblet, sworn protectors of Yeldravia and its people. For reasons of, all, of their own, all but one has left Yeldravia. Yet peace in this world is fleeting, for as one evil is vanquished, another omen emerged. At first it was subtle, a cold wind sweeping through the graveyards at night, the occasional stirring of unease among the villagers, but soon reports of unnatural movements in the woods came, of weaker undead rising from shallow graves, skeletal hands clawing their way up from the soil, restless spirits drifting through the night. At first, these threats were scattered and weak, easily dispatched by those who chose to protect the town. Yet with each passing week, these occurrences grown more frequent and the creatures more brazen. The dead are not merely rising. They seem to be drawn to something. The air is thick with foreboding, and it's only a matter of time before the slow creep of the undead give ways to something far more dangerous. Okay, so one might wonder why anyone would willingly venture into this cursed land, where the air is thick with dread and danger seems to lurk in every shadow. And yet for generations, whispers of a powerful book have echoed in the hearts of those desperate or ambitious enough to pursue it. This ancient tome which your sources claim to be hidden deep within these northern woods, is far more than just a relic. It is no ordinary artifact. Some say it once belonged to the holiest of priests who served the god Velmaros, a repository of sacred wisdom lost to time. Others speak of it as a key, capable of igniting the favor of a newer, lesser known god, should a devout follower offer it as a tribute. There are even those who believe that the book grants its reader a glimpse beyond the veil, allowing them to peer into the mysteries of life and death, to know the fate of souls as they pass between realms. Perhaps to a true believer, it might even grant a sliver of divine power, just enough to feel the weight of a deity's influence, to command their domain, if only for a fleeting moment. The stories surrounding this book are as varied as they are elusive. These are not tales told casually around campfires or spread in tavern gossip. No, these are secrets passed from one person to another, whispered with a sense of reverence or fear. Such stories are only shared when the night is darkest, when the weight of their truth or their falsehood can be felt. Not all of these tales could be true, perhaps none of them. Yet whatever the truth may be, one thing is certain. This book, known to you as Soul Flux, holds in an undeniable allure. Its power, whether imagined or, or real, is immense. And so you have formed an unlikely alliance with those around you. Some of you seek the book for the promise of glory, to wield its power to carve your name into history. 
Others are driven by the secrets it holds, determined to unlock its mysteries and harness its knowledge for yourselves. There are those among you who'd seek it as a prize to be brought back, a trophy to be, to be displayed in triumph. And of course, some of you are here simply as hired help, caught up in this quest for reasons that may not be yet fully clear. But whatever brought you here, whatever brought you together, you are bound now by this shared purpose, for better or for worse. You've been traveling for quite a while, and your journey has already been perilous. Months ago, you set out from your perspective homes, venturing across oceans and continents as passengers on ships, as riders in cavern, in, in uh, traveling in a caravans along winding trails, and finally on foot through the great marshlands known as the wetlands of a Laverne Crumb Bristle. This swamp is no ordinary bog. It is a place where the air clings to you, where the land shifts underfoot as if it was alive. The smell of decay is overwhelming, and with each step it feels as though the swamp is trying to pull you down into its murky depths. The trees here are ancient, their roots twisted and gnarled like fingers of some long undead creature. The water is thick and impenetrable, hiding whatever may lurk beneath its surface. The sour odor of damp soil mingles with the sickly sweet scent of bloated, decomposing plants. The humidity amplifies every stench, making the air feel oppressive, as if the swamp itself is trying to choke you with its own foul breath. You've already lost companions on this journey, some to the swamp itself, swallowed whole by its shifting mire, others to something that you have felt prowling in the distance, hunting you with a skill and ease that belies a deadly stalker that has prov proven to you to be easy prey. And now, as night falls, you've, you have finally reached the edge of the swamp, exhausted, battered, but alive. The cool air offers some relief, though the fog from the marsh still clings to your boots as you set up camp. You know that beyond this swamp lies the northern forest, where the rumors of the book still call to you. Each of you driven by your own reasons, your own desires, some known, others not yet revealed. As you settle down, the darkness of the swamp still looms behind you, and ahead lies the unknown. What waits beyond this night only time will tell. The search for Soulflux begins, and none of you will leave this journey unchanged. Jugin, I'll pass it over to you now. As the camera pans in, side A, river where each of you have approached. Imagine from walking through the swamps, you're dirty, grimed. Can I have everybody roll me a constitution saving throw? Everybody except for Jean, I should say, because Jean, you're not there. Go around the room. Gamora, what'd you get? Me too. 22. Tags, what'd you get? 15. Nice. Shada. Shakata. What'd you get? You're muted again. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, one second. I see an 18, so... If I roll it in another tab, is it appearing? Yes. On the... Okay. My apologies. So, and there's probably so you like got three an, of them. Yeah, all right. I got an 18. Zorpo. What'd you get? You're muted. Oh, sorry. I got a <laughs> six. So, so you take a level of exhaustion because the trek through the swamp was so rigid and tough on you. Awesome. Vestris. 18. You're good. Everybody else, you notice that coming out of the swamp, uh, Zopo was struggling a bit, and you guys felt like if you had to go like another hour, you'd be drenched and exhausted from this trek. You now start to set up camp because it's you get late evening. It's in that twilight hour between dusk till dark. Well, let's go around the room. Grimoro, what does your character look like? 
I am a green kobold, uh, about two, five, two, three green scales. You do see this this little little cap on my head, a little bit of fur on me, not much else I'm wearing other than my pack with my weapons on it. And uh, you will notice that I'm hunched a little lower than normal. It's making me look even smaller because I'm just constantly looking about and 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 I I, I seem like very very jumpy. We'll go with that. Tags, what do they see? Describe your character. Tags is a scrappy little. Um, Covered in mud, uh, cobalt, little green, and um, he's creepy. You know, he's just got a creepy look to him. Big yellow eyes, green scales, uh, clothing is tattered. Shakata, what does your character look like? So I'm wearing like a dark and colored tunic. Uh, I have a sword and shield. Um, my skin's white, but has like a yellowish tint to it. Uh, and then I also have uh, yellow eyes. But I'm standing proudful or prideful, like upright. Zorpo. Uh, you see a very small, like two foot tall, red scaled kobold in... Uh, purplish robes with a matching hat carrying what seems like a, an extra number of books given where what we're doing. Um, it is uh, casting prestidigitation on themselves to make themselves be as clean as possible at the moment. And Festress. Festerus is a close to the largest in the current group in both height and in girth. Uh, very pale skin, also has the reptilian look in his eyes that a Yan T would have. Um, as the traveling with Festerus, the occasional time he seems to isolate himself throughout the day, sometimes having conversations with himself, so it seems. And if you didn't know better, occasionally a, a small piece of bone body part might fall out of his clothing for a moment, only to be stuffed back into his sack or inside of his robe, unsure if anybody else caught that glimpse. But with enough time, I would say that probably seen a spare foot fall off here or a hand fall out there. Not spares for him, of course. All right. Uh, you set up camp. You start a fire. What is y'all doing? Tags is immediately just going to offer to take some of those books off Zorpo and help you help carry the load. Oh, thank you. It's most <laughs> appreciated. I just, I can't help but take them wherever I go. They're, they're my addiction, so to speak. Where do you keep them clean? A little magic here and there. Just a little prestidigitation cleans things up just fine. A little mending if I need to. You have so many books already. Why do you need another book? Well, because it is. Uh, the book itself is a great mystery, and I, I can never say no to a good mystery. I'm gonna go by the uh, the river there. Start trying to clean off some of my my equipment. Get the mud off of it. Go uh, what's nearest to the camp? Are we by the the tree? Yeah. Then uh, just a little bit down river. Like okay. 10, 15 feet. Oh, you over here? Yeah. 
All right, let's go out of combat initiative. Zorpa, what are you doing in this moment? Uh, I am uh, taking notes on our surroundings and trying to kind of draw a rudimentary map of where we've gone. Okay. And just kind of sketching some of the areas. Uh, I'll be like right along the edge of the river next to the bridge. North or south of the bridge? North. Uh, Festress, what are you doing? Having just left that wonderful swamp, I'm sensing the smells of some rot and decay. <laughs> and I'm trying to find the source of it. I really enjoy these old smelly things so i'm pacing kind of back and forth between camp and and the swampy area just kind of appearing looking for rotted decaying carcasses that may be laying around all right so about right there whichever direction the uh we, we were coming from i'm backtracking yeah. a slight bit but yes yeah. all righty uh we gamora or is it Grimora? Did I say it right? You said it right. All right. <laughs> what are you doing? Where are you going? I would like to position myself on the other side of the bridge, and I'm going to keep watch, because you never know what's going to sneak up on us. No, on the, on the other side of the bridge. Oh, you're going to be on the other side? Yes. Like, what if something happens to the bridge? How would I get across? Okay. Um, the, the, the river itself is not very deep. You can definitely tell this bridge is just... Make sure you get across without getting wet. Um, as you see Shataka over in the water just cleaning himself off. He's probably, like, knee-high water. I'm not uh, getting in that. It's just... Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Other side of the bridge. Go. Oh. All right, and then we have tags. What are you doing? I'm gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna be going over to where the rocks are kind of sparse through the river there, and I'm gonna be fishing. I'm gonna be just waiting for a fish to come by to snag them. Uh, which part of the river? Wh um, where the where you can see like um rocks kind of going through where where a fish might like slow down a bit right here just uh yeah right there Got it. Alrighty. we'll cut over to gene gene as you're dashing through the woods outside of Yildravia. It's like the forest or the woodlands out here. It's not a full-blown forest. There's trees, but it's not like enough to consider itself a forest by terms. It's so eerily quiet. What do you feel like? Something is chasing you. You feel like something is stalking you. And you can, all you can hear it's the sound of your own beating heart. Morris, this doesn't look good. <laughs> Those just, ghosts are creepy. Yeah. You, you get the feeling that it's on you, like... Keep looking around the corner. You, you claim you see something behind a tree and dash into the corner of the tree. I'm so sorry. Would you like to describe what Jean looks like? I totally forgot that. Was uh, so Jean is pale, black curly hair flowing out of her black um, hoodie <sighs> cape she has. She's wearing dark armor and she has like a, like a skirt overlay that's bright red. It's the only color you'll ever see on her. And she about five, six, I believe, tall. Human. Uh, 
looking, but very, very pale with dark red lipstick. And she's very cautious right now. Okay. Uh, got to figure out your audio at some point. All right. What I need, I need a perception check from Grimora and Festerus. Oof. Damn, Grimoire. All right. Uh, Natural 19, so yeah. Nice. Uh, first, uh, you're so invested into like where you came from on the ground, looking for body parts. You're just kind of zoned out, tunnel visioned. Uh, you, uh, you, Gamora, you see uh, coming out of the woods over here towards you. Uh, this well now black cloaked with red trim coming out of the like the other side where you're looking at coming towards you you should know she is running straight towards you she's running running I straight towards just, you i'm pulling on my axe and i'm throwing it at them whoa 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 that's kind of cool. Like the echoes of the dead are behind you. They're saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I can't win. I'm not here to attack you. I'm running for something else. We need to move. I'm coming in a little too hot. Well, something's chasing me, so of course I'm coming in hot. Guys, we got company. I'm going to hide. I'm going to get out of the river. Uh, oh, uh, hold on. Hold on. Festress. Actually. You are so intertwined. You hear a massive dragon coming in hot towards you. But I do hear it. Even though yeah, I'm you, invested. You hear okay, the, okay, okay. the incredible wing beats of, uh, and, and you feel the air actually being pumped down on you as this creature is, you know, maybe like 20 feet above you. Oh, damn. Ah, ah. <laughs> um, um. <laughs> I'm going to turn and run back towards the, uh, towards the camp. <laughs> and... I suppose you don't now get a chance. Turning... I need everybody to roll me initiative. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, twenty to twenty-five. Good. <laughs> Ooh. Trill 20 for 25. So 25 for Gamora. Uh, 15 to 20. I'm asking my for initial roll didn't factor in my uh, plus five. So what'd you I get? It. A four, then I have the plus five. I don't know why I didn't add it together. All right, so I'm looking for initiatives 15 to 20. Nothing? All right. 10 to 15. I got 14. I got 12. 12. Gene got 12. Mess up this. Tags. I have Grim twenty five, tags fourteen, Gene twelve. 
All right. Uh, now we have five to ten. Six. I got nine. Nine. Nine, nine. for shock. Huh? Shock. And then Zorpo, you got a what? Six. Sits, and then we followed up by Festerus. All right. All right, top of the round, Gamora. As, I don't know, Gamora, as you're having this conference, like challenging this new person, you hear a dragon just scream and is now flapping about 20 feet in the air with this angry look on your face as you look back. What do you do? And I'm sure Gene is kind of pointing. Got it. Pointing at it. I, I think I think I see it. Thank you. Got it. Got it. Why were you running toward that? One that, that's second. Really stupid. May I was it? it was behind you. It was behind me. Jean. Yeah, behind me on the other side of the bridge. I'm safe. I'm more than safe. Jean, yes. You don't feel that's what's following. That that was not following you. That is not the thing that was following you. Oh, so that's something new. Right, oh, right. I would like to take my movement to position myself on the other side of the fucking bridge to help the rest of the crew get across. What's your movement? Um, that's a good question because I know barbarians have uh, more. 40 feet. 40 feet is your right to the end of the bridge. Right. Get across, you idiots! And I'm going to hold an attack if it gets anywhere within range. Alright. Alright. Um, that's on the list. Gene. A natural 20. That hits. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> does a 14 hit? Probably not. And a 12 probably not. But one hits. Oh, yeah. Where is it at? There it is. It's going to be... Eight, eight, ten. Thirty-two points of force damage in your back, and two just kind of go wide outside of you, like these bluish streets. Hit and one hits you <laughs> right in the back. Uh, Ow! <laughs> As what was chasing you through the shadows hits you in the back, and it is a. Skull like creature with like wizard type clothing and from its hand. Its jaw is so jacked up, it cannot make words out. Oh, you're in trouble now. Next up is the dragon. It was nice playing with you guys. I'm going to put spectacles on and say, you wouldn't hit a guy with glasses on, would you? I'll need every... Actually, first off, 
I need everybody to roll me a wisdom saving throw, please. You guys are level 13. This will be a breeze. Speaking of level uh, 13. All right. DC is 16. Who made it? Who did not make it, I should say. Raise your hand. I did not. I'm no. a feared. Yep. I was already uh, a feared. I didn't want to go over here. So, Festress, Zorpo, Gamora, and Ted, as the presence of this dragon comes at you, you are, like, it's the biggest thing you've seen in quite some time. Uh, Zorpo, you fail. And I need, as it opens its mouth, this green spur, a spray, out. I need y'all to make me constitution saving throws, please. Uh, tags, uh, that act you did instead of a saving throw. You talking to me? Yes. Tags. Whichever one was tags. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, y you're gonna want to hit the con saves. It'll be in a little save table on on the left, not the ones on the top. Tickle. You like your your first roll was better though. I shouldn't have said anything. I right. Uh, I need Festus. What'd you get? Twenty-two. You take half, so you take twenty-one points of uh, uh, double check poison damage. I have resistance to poison, so I'm going to take eleven. Take eleven. Sorpo. What'd you get? I got a sixteen. You fail, and you take forty-two points of poison damage. Uh, Gamora. I got the same as her. 42 points of poison damage. And last one is Tad's. What'd you get? 15. 42 points of poison damage. As it spews this poison mist all across. That is its turn. Tad's, you're up. I'm going to pop smoke <laughs> with my little bottle as an action, and then I'm going to hide as a bonus action. What's this? What, what are you popping? The bottle that I have. The it's like an the ever smoking bottle that creates a cloud of smoke. How big is that cloud? Is what I'm saying. Oh. Ten foot? I believe it is ten feet. Uh, sorry. So the, the cloud through the smoke pours out in a sixty-foot radius from the bottle. Um, it increases by ten feet every turn that the bottle is open to a maximum of one twenty. That's a big. That's a big radius. that's that call it a day and you're using your action to hide make me a stealth check 
Yes, Kelly Goblin popping all the bowels. Alrighty. And Gene. You're muted. Um. My role was a um, a natural one, but okay. it's a uh, it's you should a have 16. advantage. You should have advantage because you're in the clock. Oh, okay. Sorry, I, I didn't just click that, but uh, okay. okay, there we we're good now. Thirty three. Got it. Let's try this again. I'm gonna cast spiritual weapon at third level. Got it. Where are you putting that? Uh, behind the guy who hit me. Let me try this again, because my thing wants to lag out so freaking bad. Okay. Still lagging out. Twenty-eight? Yeah, that hits. Alright, and they're gonna take come on, oh hi. Seven force damage. That's it for a level three. That's, I know it's ridiculous, it's, but it's persistent. So, yeah, I guess I'll... all right. Uh, and then I'm gonna. No, I'll see right there. That's it. Yep. All right. We now we have uh, Shataka. Shataka. You move me. Uh, about 15 to 20 feet to the left away from the dragon All right, and then uh, towards so you're in water so it's uh, half moon while you're in the water getting over the rocks okay. can you move me completely towards that uh, skeletal thing All right. for my max range what's your movement 30 yeah so it'll be 15 feet and then I'm well, going to uh, use yeah, uh, 15 feet to get out. And that's where you get right there. Okay. And then I'm going to take my longbow and I'm going to aim it at the uh, skeletal thing. Go ahead. Let's see. Having a bit of a lag on D&D Beyond for the rolls. Is it rolling for you guys? It is doing nothing. I would just roll okay. roll dice. It's okay. doing that laggy for you. Alright. Um, I'll just roll a d20. 18. Uh, 18 hits. Alright. 1d8 plus 3. Four. Four damage. Four damage? You got it. What does that look like? Um, so it flies through the air and it just zips right into its chest. Nice. I'm sure you have more than one attack. And I will lose another arrow. Everyone. 17 hit. 17 does hit. All right. Yeah. 10 yep. to hit. 10 damage, you mean? Yes. 10 damage. My apologies. Yep. Got it. Has this. <laughs> uh, as you hit it with the the hand this crooked finger starts pointing I point back <laughs> is that your turn that's the end of my turn yes Zerpo 
All right. Am I feared by the dragon or the skeleton person? Uh, Azoli, can you check your Zoom message? Do we want to do that right now? Oh, yeah. I messaged somebody. Uh, ignore all of that, uh, Gene. <laughs> Gene's got <laughs> secrets now. Uh, which, which am I feared by, the dragon or the skeleton guy? The dragon. All right, then I'm going to turn to the skeleton guy, uh, Skitter, till I'm within 60 feet, and he needs to make a dexterity saving throw as I cast dis uh, Disintegrate at 7th level. Ooh. Uh, 30 feet at the... How far do you, can you move? I have a 30 foot movement. So I guess you're going to ride on the other side, disintegrate. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the save? Uh, Dex 18. Rolled a natural 18. Let's see. Uh, 20. Okay, so he'll take half damage. Uh, he'll take half of 78, so 30, 39. And then let me double check if he still takes damage his next turn. Shatter, concentration? No, it's not shatter, no. disintegrate. Oh, disintegrate, disintegrate, my bad. Um... Nope, just takes half damage. Okay. All right. You did how and much? How was the total amount? Thirty-nine. Oh. Okay. So half of that is. No, that was seventy-eight total. He took thirty-nine. Got it. So I did do it right. Okay. Got yeah. it. All right. And uh, that's my turn. And you sent that to everyone in Zolti. I know. I figure there's no reason to, to not share with well, everyone now that I... Well, at session zero is doing the other thing. So halfway is supposed to reveal itself in the moon. So, okay. Uh, uh, everybody on the DPT. You see... Blocking out half the moon, hovering above, way in the air, this winged individual shows itself. As he drops onto the floor and breaks off my face. <laughs> All right. Next Did he break? Up. Yeah, he fell off the base. He just broke off the base. I just have to re glue him. Uh, next up, uh, Zorpo, you did that. Festress. Given that I'm feared, I cannot directly attack the dragon, correct? You can directly attack him, but you can't move towards him. I'm going to indirectly attack him as I retreat towards the bridge, towards my companions with my maximum movement. Um, before going, though, Festerus, um scared so much that he releases some air behind him in the form of... I just lost the spell. Stinking cloud. Okay. And it is a con save. But if the dragon has poison resistance, it won't take any damage whatsoever. It will just obscure the vision. Since it breathes poison on us, I'm under the above table assumption that 
You probably don't even need to make a roll. No, oh, he's immune to poison. Yeah. So all it's really going to do is provide a uh, somewhat of a smoke screen as he scampers to retreat towards the bridge, towards the rest of the group. What's your moment? 30 feet. All right. Alrighty. Is that your turn? Uh, yes, it is. All right. We're now. Zolti, take near control for this. Ah, so you see this creature just kind of apparate in front of the moon. Uh, those of you that have uh, good vision, you can see that it seems to be another skeletal uh, type creature with definitely like threads of of skin uh hanging off of its bones it has these dark black green feathers it's spreading out from its wing it's holding with it uh what looks to be a flail it uh is going to swoop in Ooh, yeah he is creepy uh he is wearing ominous dark red hood and and cape and he is going to sweep in he's kind of going to be kind of in between where uh, Fester, Festerus is and the green dragon. And you will see him point towards the dragon and you'll hear him say, at least Festerus, you'll be able to hear this. Do not interfere with my quarry. And he reaches out a long skeletal hand and points his finger at the dragon. And then you see this, it's like lightning, but it's, you know how lightning would give you a flash and burn your eyes for a second as it's so bright? It seems to do exactly the opposite. You see like the tendrils and the forks of lightning, but it's it's black. It's like, like hollowed out into a void and it strikes this dragon, some sort of a spell. And the dragon, you see it, it, it kind of voicelessly shrieks into the air uh, and its wings kind of bat frantically and then it starts to fall down to the ground with a crunching, bone-wrenching sound. And then it flies back up to where it was. Uh, you, you. Guys, you guys do not have... We are not feared anymore. You said we're not feared? No longer we're feared. Frightened. Frightened. Yeet. This made sense. He's dead. So, you know, why would you be scared of something that's dead? Scared of the darkness. I, mean, I can think of dragon. five reasons why you should be afraid of something that is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Top of the round, Gamora. I'm going to curiously look at the wings thing. Not sure if I should think it. Uh, uh, yeah, fuck it. I'm gonna go right back across the bridge. I I just like going across this bridge, guys. Just back and forth, back and forth. Forty feet. I moved you back across. Yeah, uh, I know. Where Where is Grimora right now? I'm the pink base. Okay. Pink base. Yeah. I'm just debating. Just, I don't know this Jean. She came in way too, way too fast. I don't know if I need to protect her. That thing's not attacking me. No. Hmm. But I guess I should take the initiative since one of my crew already shot at it. So it's probably going to be mad at us now too. Damn it. Why'd you do that? I'm going to rage. Because I was really stupid. I can't really tell if I'm angry at my party member or at the thing over there, but I'm raging and I'm going to, with my uh, action, dash toward it, if that's all I can do. Oh, 40 feet. Yes. You get right up in its face. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's all I can do, because I use my action to dash. Alrighty. 
that stuff is. The thing that you just ran up to and got in close pro proximity, Gamora. Yeah, what you got? Alrighty. He, like, like a death stare, let's pass you. Well, I am this finger that was pointed out towards Shataka. I'm gonna cast a fireball and I need that saves from Jean, Zoropo, and Shataka. Damn, I miss, I miss Sentinel. I'm sorry, that was what kind of saving throw, Dex? Yep. Dirt 20. 10. 17. No, I am angry. That's not him. coming up. Let me, uh, I didn't have this pulled up. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, what is the dice for fireball? Oh. 3d10. What, In what that level? case, can I counterspell that? Was a reaction? Oh, now you want to counterspell? Yeah. All right. Um, I wasn't you... sure if it was an ability or a spell. No, it, it was fireball. Okay. Are, are you are you close enough? Uh, what's, how... the range of, what, what's the range of your uh, counterspell? That's what I'm triple checking. Counter spell is 60 feet. Oh, yay. Oh, he is in 50 feet. You. All right. What level are you casting at? <laughs> uh, sixth level. Uh, yeah. So DC is 10 plus the spell's level. What level is he casting it at? What's the DC he's got to make? Uh, the DC is 10 plus the spell's level. Your level? Yes, so it would be six, 16. Six. I am assuming, because I roll very poorly for that, a 12 does not make it. No, it does not. <sighs> well, that's all you can do. All right. Uh, that's what I thought. Uh, Festress and Taz, give me a perception check. Five. Be in your skills there, Tagged. Oh. You're muted. 24. 24. Tags, uh, from over in the direction of where that dragon just fell from the sky, uh, you hear some strange sounds. It's like, it's like, it's, first of all, it sounds like a bit of a hissing. Um, with a, with 24, I think you're probably recognizing it's probably some of like the acid from inside of the dragon was probably like starting to to burn into the calcium from the dragon's bones. But then you start to hear some cracking as if it was like, it's the sound of, of bones, as if bones are breaking or, or I wouldn't say crumbling, but they're definitely moving. Something from that direction is happening. And I'm no longer feared from it because I know nope. I'm assuming nope. it's dead. So no. Nope. Okay. I don't know what to do with that information. Um, but it's your I, turn. I was, what would you like to do? I think so. I was going to ask how far away I am from the winged fella, and and I'm oh. also wondering how high up he is. Is there any trees that could like? I'm wondering if he's 
in attack range. He's currently 60 feet. So always oh, way up there. Yeah, he's he's 60 feet in the air? Yeah, he's currently 60 feet in the air. And oh, okay. Okay. With your, with your perception check, you definitely see just kind of hovering like this with his arms. Just definitely observing. Uh, observing mode. <laughs> Okay, I'm I'm going to run to I'm just going to I'm going to hold my bottle of smoke and I'm going to run all the way over to where that tree was uh, knocked over and I'm going to kind of peek over there and see what's up with the dragon. All right. So I got way, I got way I picture it you're leaving like a trail of smoke behind you. So yep. We'll do this. That's the strat. So tags, you're definitely seeing this dragon start to, or it's 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 crumbled broadly. It seems to be decaying at a faster rate than you would suspect. Like this thing is starting to become a rotten mess. But then you suddenly see one bone just suddenly jet up out of the uh, out out of the body, and then another, you know, kind of a skeletal wing kind of like comes up the other side. It's definitely moving. Uh, I'm just more <sighs> looks like it might be reforming. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna hold on. Get out of here, pup. Get out of here. I'm gonna so, just take a peek at my inventory for a second here. To get all the way over there, you would definitely have to dash for that. So I guess I will dash for that. I'm going to. I'm, I'm, I well, mean, to can make I, it all the way to the tree, you would have dashed. Well, my movement is 50. Yep. So you still have about 10 more feet of movement. Okay. And um, I, it looks like I can bonus action dash. Yep. You so, are yeah. Let's do oh, that. Oh, you, you could have gonna... bonus action to get over there. You still have your action if you like. That's a good point. <clears throat> Could a bonus action dash got to where you're at, and you still have your action if you want to do anything. Okay, I yeah, I just don't know what to do. I don't have a, any uh, ranged weapons, so I think I'm just hanging out. I'm going to... You when when you hold an action, it has to be sp for something specific, right? Yep, a triggering action. Can I just, th <laughs> Can I just throw a rock at it? <laughs> I'm just going to throw a rock at it. What else can you do? Right. Easy enough. You can, I think I think I think it success, successfully hits like it's pro. Yeah. 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 It, I'm not going to have you roll for it. It's a big pile of bones that's rotting away. You just... <laughs> I don't know what to do. I get let you that be a free action. You want to use your action to dash away or what? Um. N um. No, I think I'm just gonna sit put, but I'm still hiding. I'm okay. Uh, so used to hitting the nets for VTT, and I'm doing that. All right, Gene, and then uh, Shataka, you on deck? So I am going to step towards the towards the tree a bit, about like about ten feet. North or south? North. North. <laughs> Sorry, hold on. That gets you about right there. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt on the creature that attacked me. Got it. Nat 20, so it would be a 31 to hit. Uh, uh, a nat 20 hits. It's guaranteed hit. <laughs> critical hit. <laughs> Sixteen First damage. About Matt twenty. Huh? Sixteen damage. It's radiant, right? Radiant, yeah. Sixteen damage. Yeah. Sixty-six, yeah. Ignore that. It, I had to make sure I hit the button, so I track. So sixteen damage total. All right. Oh yes. And then as my bonus action, I'm going to use my spiritual weapon. That's going to be a 37. 
Oh, sorry, 27. My bad. Yeah, that hits. Two seconds, sorry. Uh, one, two, Twelve force. What does all that look like? You want to describe it? Uh, so you can just see uh, Jean point out her finger and a ball of red and black, like fiery lightning almost, shoots right out at the um, skeleton creature that first hit me. And then you're going to see this um, floating, like, see-through black and red face, kind of like the one she had on her hip, swing and clock him in the back of the head. Nice. All right, and uh, that's Jean's turn. Shada? Shakata? Uh, I'm going to lose uh, two Sorpro more Yone. arrows towards that undead that I originally Got shot it. at. 23 to hit, and then yep, 27 to hit, I take it, also. Yep, both hit. All that damage. Four. And seven. So, and then that'll end my turn. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Zorpo, you're up, and then Festress, you're on deck. All right. Uh, let's see. There's the guy that's. Uh, the skeletal guy is still within 60 feet of me. He needs to make a dexterity saving throw as I launch an emerald uh, sphere in his direction, uh, casting vitriolic sphere at 5th level. Uh, he got a f sits. All right. He is going to take... Let me get a scroll back down... 12d4, so he takes 29 damage this round, and next turn he takes 15. Nice. What does that look like? Uh, just glowing emerald spear just hitting him right in the chest. <laughs> and, it so, and that's acid damage. As it puts a nice little hole in this body, you can see the acid dripping off, starting to burn away little cloth he has left around him. All right. Is that your turn? You want to move? You want to go anywhere else? Uh Oh, Uh, let's see. Is there Are there any enemies within 10 feet of me? No. No. Okay, I'm going to unless you consider I'm. unless you consider Shataka whatever an enemy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do not. Con I do not consider Shakta my my. Uh... Shata. All right. Yeah. All right, uh, Festress, you're up. So, did you want to move? I'm sorry. No, I'm going to stay where I'm at. Festress. Um, well, I suppose I did not perceive the events that are happening uh, behind him. So he proceeds to head towards across the the bridge. Going to take my full 30 feet of movement. Um, and if you could please tell me the distance that remains between myself and the uh, creature that is in front of Grimora. 30 gets you right on the bridge. Uh, you want to what? Just, you want to like learn the distance between myself and the oh. enemy in front of Grimora. Uh, that's what I thought it was. Exactly 60 feet. Wonderful. I will cast a Ray of Sickness at the 6th level. That is a dirty 20 to hit. Yeah, that hits. For 15 points of... I 
Actually, I don't know if this one's necromancy damage or poison damage. It might be necrotic. On hit, the target takes 2d8 poison damage. I must make a con save. Okay. So it hits. It takes how much damage? This is for the smaller level, but I did it at the sixth level. Was so that the I, first I, I hit after the, the guiding bolt? No, the first hit after the guiding bolt was shot to cause. So you would have had an advantage on your roll. Shot yeah, I just remember that. Ah. No, actually, Gene hit it with the spiritual weapon. But mm. huh. okay, yeah, it's whatever. Uh, so first, it makes a con save. Uh, con eighteen. Uh, that saves. And how much poison damage? Let's see if I failed save. It's also poison. Okay, that doesn't matter then. Um, the damage was 15. 15 as you... But it is not poisoned. No. Uh, as the 15 points of poison damage, you feel like which should be exactly what you need. But with your studies and your school of magic, you automatically realize that was a bad call that it didn't take the full amount of damage. Oh, I just wanted to play a little longer, I suppose. That'll be the end of my turn. All right. Uh, initiative zero. So this creature that's flying up in the air, it uncrosses its arms and it kind of reaches out, palm open, and just says, rise. And then points down with his other hand down <clears throat> at Jean and says, attack. And then you see this creature in the south by the by the swamp where the dragon once was it begins to start to climb its way up it's still on the ground it's the skeletal remains of this what was a green dragon it rears up its neck and you would expect to hear a roar like a dragon but this creature doesn't roar like a dragon like the dragon it once was instead an unsettling sound fills the air. It's a deep, rattling vibration that seems to come from the very core of its skeletal frame. The vertebrae in its long, serpentine neck clatter and scrape against one another, echoing like the rattle of a long, massive, forgotten snake. It's a chilling, rhythmic death rattle reverberating in waves. And occasionally there's an eerie, almost chirping sound, a deep, dry, hollow noise that emerges from the, the creature's skeletal appendages scraped together like the haunting melody of crickets in a lifeless field. The sound rises and falls in pitch, unpredictable, like a whisper carried on a wind that no longer blows. Uh, Jugin, what would you like the Draculich to do? Well, he doesn't go till after the wizard unless you want him to do it this turn. Uh, so it is a risen creature, so it takes the initiative of immediately after the creature that summoned it. Got so it. its initiative is now. Oh, so it no longer has the old initiative. Got it. So, that's the case. This Rip Wings is still able to somehow get its half scale of total and fly 80 feet. Sorry, Gene. Yeah, time to walk away from Gene. Flying above you. Does Festerus get an opportunity attack? No. He flies straight up. Starts hovering above. He's going to look down. I'm not going to do a fight for presence again. But I should. It's but I'm not. magnificent. <laughs> Uh, a straight line right down to you, Gene. Can you give me a dexterity saving throw? Uh, 
I got a nat one for a total of three. Ooh. Yep. I'm in trouble. Oh, I roll way too many. Write that down. That There we go. 68 points of poison damage. As a straight beam of poison coming from the mouth erupts all over your body. That is now top of the round. Are you still up, Gene? Nice. Gamora. I'm going to take out this fucker in front of me who completely ignored me and started trying to shoot shit at my friends. So I'm going to pick up my axe and I'm going to swing at him recklessly. And it's a uh, 17 to hit. 17 hits. Also, do you have shield? No. Four. Um, it doesn't add the rage bonus, does it? Uh, 13 damage. Okay. 13 damage? And, um, yeah, I'm probably doing it wrong. Uh, as I think uh, uh, it's usually two when you rage, but I don't know what high this high level would be. Three. Three? So add yep. three more on top of that. Oh, I, I did. I, okay. I, I got 10, okay. so 13. All right. Yeah, I didn't roll that high on the damage. Um, And going to attack him again. Got it. Um, I was supposed to roll that twice. 27 to hit. 27 hits. Uh, a little better damage. Uh, 17 damage. 17 damage. Would you like to describe how you like to do this? Oh, yes, perfectly. I'm going to carve my axe straight through his metal. And for flavor, I'm just going to pull my ends in there, grab the rib cage, and just rip them apart. As you do this, you shred, and as you're doing this, you realize... It's fun. Look at the fun we're having. Gee, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. As you cut into it, you realize there was an energy with inside waiting to explode. And you sling his body... His body flies. Yeah, I'm gonna need you, Gene, and Zorpo to make me dexterity saving throws. I threw him behind me? Well, it's like, the way you described it, he's separated <laughs> and blew up. I ripped him in pieces. He should explode on me. <laughs> I mean, he's got a big explosion. You said Dex or Con, sorry. Debt save. So I need Zorpo, Gene, and yourself to make give me debt saves. Nineteen. I get advantage on that. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Oh, wait, I get advantage on uh <laughs> fifteen. Let's 
it would be 37 points of cold damage. But y'all, uh, everybody got higher than a 15, right? Yeah, I, I got a 19. All right. Yep. So 37 halved. So which is 19, 18? 19. 19 points of cold damage. Which I'm halved again because I'm raging. I'm down. Zorpo's looking bad. Oh, it's so nice. Our healer just went down. Right? I'm down. Yep. Okay. But he is dead. He's no longer. Ted's. I found, I found myself a bit of a ways from the fight. Um, I, uh, I probably... You, you, you saw all that and he rise and flew away from you. I was gonna... I was. I didn't really know when to say this, but I, I was wondering if there would have been an opportunity for Tags to use the branches of the fallen tree to, like, jump on him as he flew past. But is that too far gone now? That yeah, it's too far gone. So you, uh, you that's part of your action. You, when you hold your action to use your reaction to do something. Yeah, so I should have... You said that. Um, yeah. I will just dash towards the fight. <laughs> okay. Bonus <laughs> action dash. Bonus yeah, action. I'm just I'm just going. What's I'm your just movement? Going as 40? far as I can. It's 50. Walking feet. Is, uh, walking is 50 feet. Damn, so you can dash 100 feet. Heck yeah. Oh uh, yeah, you can easily get you can get a right up next to G. Oh, I can get there? All right. Uh, Oof. So I you, uh you It's still yeah, it's... Zorp, Fistress, and uh, Zorpo, you see little Tad just bolt right across to you. I'm also still emanating smoke. Uh, so, imagine, uh, but it takes a little bit of time to come out, so you just have a yeah. trickle of smoke. Like a trail. Out. Yeah. Okay. Um, could I, uh, so, okay, so that was, uh, that was a bonus action. I haven't, ac I haven't had an action yet. Yeah, you should have your action. Okay, can I help the person that just went down? Uh, you can do a... Uh, you can stabilize them with a medicine check. All right, I'll do that. Unless you have That's healing what... potions. I don't know if we gave y'all healing potions. I, I should attack, eh? How high up is the dragon? 20 feet. 20. Hmm. I think. <clears throat> Melee characters are usually very useless against dragons. Yeah, I'm kind of stuck here, right? Eh? Um, okay. But you can I'll stabilize help. Jean. I will. I will stay. I'll. I'll use. I'll do that. I'll stabilize Jean. Do a mess and check, please. Okay. Is this? Um, it's in your skills. I got it. Yep. Heck yeah! T uh, dirty twenty. Jean, you are stabilized as, but you're not rolling death saves. You're still unconscious. Alrighty. Uh, next up is Gene. You're stabilized. Uh, Shataka. And then Zorpa, you on deck. This is me? Shata. Yep. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to throw two more arrows towards that dragon. Got it. This is an 11 hit. Uh, 11 does not. All right. What about 26? 26 says yes. All right. Very good. Very good. For 11 damage. Nice. And then that'll end my turn. You want to describe that one? Um, I take it I'm like right underneath him, right? Yep. So uh, I look up above me, see this dragon, pull two arrows, look up, and just let him go, one after the other. And I'm thinking to myself, what have we got ourselves into? All righty. Zorpo. All right, I'm going to turn to the dragon and uh, launch another emerald spear in its direction because it's a range of 150 feet, and it next needs to make a DC 18 dex save. 
Okay. 18 debt save. Mm-hmm. Ooh, 16. All right, it will take... Actually, hold on. Is it a spell you're doing? Yes. Oh, he has a vantage. Natural one, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. So he takes uh, 29 acid damage, and he'll take 10 more on his next turn. Nice. Acid damage? Acid. How much? It was 10? Uh, it was 29, and then he'll take 29. 10 more on his next turn. Ah, I heard it. That's why I heard it. 10. All right, got it. And right. I'm going to stay where I'm at. All right. Uh, at the end of your turn, he's going to spend legendary actions. Actually, Azaldi, since you're commanding, what's the legendary action you wanted to take? Oh, I don't have his stat block up at the moment. Um... So you have a winged attack, tell attack, where well, winged attacks cost two actions. And then uh, you have a tell attack and the tat. I don't think you really care about the first one. So you either make a tell attack or you make a winded attack, which uh, everybody around him has to make a. a We're going to go tail attack. Targeting who? The one that uh, just did the this. Um. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. We're gonna attack the one with the the one that's shooting from ranged. Sorry, oh. shock that. That's all. It makes good. sense because that's the only one that's in reach for the tail attack. Yeah. So tail attack. I rolled in at one. So Shata. Whew. You get an opportunity attack. Now I allow uh, you to use your arrow for this because he's still up in the air. All right. Because I roll yeah, a freaking at one. Put that over here in the dice. Does channel. 19 hit? 19 just hits. I'll take it. Yeah, you're going to see this tail kind of whip down Seven from, damage. This, from this dragon and just smash right into the water just beside you. That'll be seven damage. Got it. Uh, that was Zorpo that just went. Festress, you're up. Seeing tags uh, stabilizing this stranger that seems to have brought a lot of company with her. Um, Above table, also... we did we did give y'all health potions, didn't we? I thought so. No. Oh. No, I've had this one for a while, so no. Okay. All right. Uh, no. I imagine y'all would have started this adventure with health potions, so you can. Uh, I rolled a seven for seven health potions. We'll say. Actually, we'll say each of y'all have one health health potion. Well, seeing uh, this unknown person down, but yet realizing with uh, Tags' involvement in it that it, she may be important, uh, Festress is going to draw one of his daggers and cut his hand uh, to cast life, life Transference at the fourth level. So I will take 21 points of damage, and it will heal... Um, What's the range on that? 30. I mean, I'll yeah, move 10 move. feet then. Yeah, that'll be fine. Uh, about right there, you can get there. Yeah, so I'm going to take uh, 21 points of damage and it's going to add 42 health to Gene. What does that look like when you, know, you already cut your fang? What's the spell? Yeah, so as he cuts his, as he, as he cuts and the blood's immediately kind of starting to run down his hand, you see the blood almost like stop midstream and kind of pool up and then shoot across and almost direct little tiny vein-like beams into over towards Gene's unconscious self. 
with the rest of my turn, I would like to move south away from the dragon about 10 or 15 more feet, not the full movement. And, uh, and yeah, that's it. Well, 30 gets you to the edge, unless you just want to jump in the water. Most no, fine. I'm fine where that is. Okay. At the end of your turn, Soldi, what did you which you want to do another teleattack for a legendary action? Uh yes, yeah, so we're gonna attack the uh the arrow shooter again. Alright. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's definitely gonna hit. That is a twenty-eight to hit. Yeah, that'll do it barely, but you got me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Just barely. Not great from the damage, so. 15 points of bludgeoning damage as this tail swoops down. As you release, you weren't prepared to come back around and smack you upside the head again. Mm. And then turn zero. Eggs. You see this creature up in the sky with its with its black ominous wings. It looks down at you and it just says do not interfere with my quarry. I want her on the brink of death. And then it points down to you and it commands attack. All right. Let's see if it recharges his breath. It does. You and Jean need to make death saves, please. Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay, that fails. Twenty-two. Twenty-two saves. Uh, I rolled one extra dice, so I'll take 10 off that. Uh, 45 points of poison damage if you failed. Um, halved is 23. So, Taz, you take 23 points of poison damage. But I think you have... Down again. Uh, Taz, don't you have a reaction to have that again? For a debt save? Uh, a reaction. Um, reaction tab. You um, Uncanny dodge. Sorry. Oh, um, evasion yeah, is for the deck. Evasion. And he would take no damage then, wouldn't he? Does he pass? If he succeed? Yeah, I think so. So are you um, going to use your evasion to take no damage? Uh, yes. Got it. Rogues are cool. You use your evasion as he's like you like you're able to get small, but all the stuff that you would hit you hit Gene right behind you. Gene is out unconscious again. Hmm. Top hmm. of the round. Top of the round, Gamora. I uh, finished with the thing in front of me that exploded. I'm going to turn around and see this. What the fuck is that? I didn't see that before now because I hadn't looked behind me yet. What the? What, wasn't that dead? I'm going to head toward the dragon. What's your, what's your movement? 40. Flapping above you about 20 feet off the ground. That's perfect because I'm going to throw a javelin at him or she or it or, you know, gonna go on my javelin. I'm just gonna attack it. Oh, I'm still raging, aren't I? Oh, I didn't say reckless, so whatever. Uh, 22. 22 hits. 
died because I forgot so reckless. So I didn't get to. Fine. 12 damage. And now I don't have a javelin. <laughs> My javelin is gone. It lands in there and sticking out the chest. And he goes. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to throw one of my axes <laughs> with my second attack. No, I'm not. Well, I am, but I'm going to miss. Oh, 16. I 16 misses. Yeah, it misses. Yeah, okay. It goes way wide. Got it. And uh, my bonus action, I'm going to do something I Taz, was hoping some, I was going to do something I was hoping one of my other kobolds were going to and I'm going to open my mouth and let out a, a, I'm not going to roleplay this or else I'll break the, the mic. I'm going to let out a draconic cry. Um, and all enemies they're they're both well the one uh, the one that's flying above us is not within range but the dragon still is so we all of my companions um who can hear that cry get advantage on their attacks now and that's the end of my turn got it uh tads are up gene you're on deck but i think you're unconscious no okay um this if, you want to for, if you want to force feed Gene a healing potion, it'd be a bonus action. <laughs> That'd be a bonus action. All right. I'm staring this winged creature in the face just as the smoke is just bellowing out around me like he just told me what to do. And I'm like... <laughs> um. So yeah, I'm pouring the potion right on Gene's face. <laughs> Staring him right in the eye, <laughs> and I want to hold my action. Just Is pointing it on her face or shoving it down her throat. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm get both. <laughs> um, is I want to ask a question. I don't know if this is really a thing. I want to do like a grappling. I want to save. I want to hold my action to try to jump on the dragon if it attacks again. Okay, uh, attacks you. Attacks someone near me. Like I'm I'm waiting for a tail to swing down so that I can like you know. Okay. Alright. Um Roll two was it two D eight was it two eight two D eight plus two? I think uh push from healing. Okay, sorry. Um, 2d4? 2d4 plus 2. Bro, 2d4. Oh, 2d4. Sorry. I'll okay. redo that. Here we go. <clears throat> oh, nice. Hey, there we go. So Not 10. Max it get, out. <laughs> yeah, you get, you get 10 HP back, Gene. As the warm, soothing liquid flows in your body. <sighs> Oh, you've been down twice. Give me two con saves. I totally forgot about this. One was a two, one was a nat 20. All right, you take a level of exhaustion. <laughs> and it's your turn. And Shata, you're on deck. Okay, I am going to stand up angrily. And I'm going to cast. Wait, let's see. Hold on. Is everyone within 60 feet of me? Pretty much, yeah. Okay, then I'm casting Mask Your Wounds at seventh level. See how much everyone gets back. (laughs) 
Being a little slow. Uh, 23 health. Nice. Thank you. Okay. Everyone gets 23. Yep, Good everyone test. gets 23. Yep. Well done, Gene. Back at the pool. Right. At the end of your turn. You want to I... do the command as old? Uh, yeah. I have cantrips. I'm gonna cast guidance on me. No, nope, actually, I can't. Sorry. Gene's turn. Yeah, I wanted yeah, to land. Yeah, Okay. And attack at tags. Uh, can I move my uh uh spirit weapon twenty feet closer since I still have that up? Yeah. Sweet. I know it's not in range, but I can at least do that. Make it closer. <laughs> And that's it, my turn. It lands. It's going to use Yo, its winged attack. It's going to cost two actions. I need Gene, Tags, and Festress all to give me dexterity saving throws. When it lands, does his held action come into effect where he tries to jump on him? That's what I was going to ask. <laughs> yep. Uh, you can, but you still would suffer this anyway. So Sure. So I'm doing the save first. 15. Yeah. 15. 16. What, uh, what was the, uh, what was the save again? Dex. 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 Just rolling terribly for these. 20. 20. You fail, Tads. So we'll flavor oh. it up. We'll flavor it up as you're trying to jump on them. So uh, you take each, uh, let's see, that is 13 points of bludgeoning damage. If you have failed, have that would be uh, seven. Uh, so you take seven points of bludgeoning damage, Festress and Jean. And Taz, as you're trying to jump on, starts flapping its wings, smash you upside the head, and you fall prone onto the ground. Oh. Uh, Tag said 20. I know. 20 failed. Oh. oh. Oof. Oof. Do you not hear me when I say it failed? We thought maybe we <laughs> misheard you or you misheard him. Like... Just wishful thinking. <laughs> All right. Uh, Shata, you're up. It's landed, correct? Yes. All right, I'm going to go in for two melee strikes. Uh, 14. 14 misses. Okay. And As I'm not going to ask about another 14. Wing the block it. Huh? I'm not going to ask about the other 14, so. <laughs> the slice is uh, whatever you're using. Uh, I don't know what you were using for your melee attack. Long sword. Long sword. It just bats away your long sword as it flaps its wing in front of it, shielding its face. Hmm. That'll be it for me. Yeah. Uh, Zorpo and then Festress, you're on deck. All as right. Land. Uh... The lich is still up, so... <clears throat> uh... You know what? Second verse, same as the first. Let's launch another Emerald Sphere in his direction. He needs to make a deck save. 18. Does have advantage. A natural 19 for a total of 25. Okay, so he'll take half damage. So that's 23. He'll take half of 23, and then he'll take 7 next turn. Half of 23. Well, you got to remind me of the ones next turn, because I he's okay. supposed to take 10 last time, right? Yeah. So let me go ahead and take that one. And it was 15 the time before that. I thought that was on a skeleton guy. Oh, no, you're right. That was on the skeleton guy. You're correct. So, yes, this time it'll be 
So minus uh, I'll 10. try to remember. And then this yeah, one so minus... on my next turn, he'll get. So how much is he taking right now? Uh, twelve. Twelve. All right. And just remind me on his next turn. Yeah. All right. Is that your turn? That is my turn. Vestris. I can't find it within me to take down something so beautiful, nor do any weapons in my arsenal have such capabilities, do they, brother? Uh, so I'm going to cast Chill Touch. It's a cantrip. Mm -hmm. um, yes. 14 to hit. 14 misses. Maybe your soul bewildered by its beauty and you just shut your eyes and throw it and it went over his head. Yeah, maybe so. Um, now I'm kind of under its right wing in the battle cam, right? Yeah, a little bit it, forward, it, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. If I move very much, is it going to provoke? Well, I can't ask that. I'm staying where I am. I... Uh, you can get closer. You're currently 10 feet away from it. But there's really nothing else I can do. Um, oh, holding ready with a counterspell reaction, but that's about all I'm doing for my turn. Got it. Uh, turn zero. How many times have you died now, Gene? It's going to look down. And is going to point at the little kobold that seems to be throwing spears and javelins and axes and point at you. Let's see if he gets his breath back. Nope. It'll fly up to get on the... Actually, what's the range of attacks? 10 feet. No, here he has to fly up and get around the other side. So, opportunities attacks from. Opportunity attacks from. Shatak. And uh, I'll give Tad's an opportunity attack, but it would be disadvantaged because you're prone. 21 hit? <laughs> I'm still swinging. 21 hits. Yeah, Taz, you can have it with disadvantage. So you right click and roll with disadvantage on your attack. Uh, I clicked the wrong one. Hold on. 13 damage. 13 total damage. Oh, I see. Okay. So how do you roll at disadvantage? I'm sorry, guys. How do you do so that? Right, so right click your weapon attack and it'll pop up a little bot. So I got it. Great. There Thank you, you. Awesome. There we go. Let's go. Whoa, 20, hey, 20 hits. Oh, 20 I'm still hits. Swinging. Did he have to roll two 20s at disadvantage for that to be a thing? No, no. He rolled a 20 and a 10, but he has a plus 10 to his attack. So disadvantage, mm. he got a 20. Okay. I was going to be like, oh Slicing and dicing. You want to describe your attack from prone and deal your damage? Yeah. So as this... As this wing kind of smacks me, I kind of, I, I was trying to jump on him, right? So I got my daggers out and I'm kind of in the air, like looking at it, like I'm going to land and the wing just poof. And then I kind of slam on the ground and there's all this dust. And it's like when you get thrown off your bike and you're kind of winded for a second, but his, I'm still swinging at him. So I'm just, I'm just. I'm just sharp, a sharp little uh, kobold at the moment. Uh, so that's with my short sword. So I do the two points of, or seven points of piercing damage. Nice. Oh, wait. As you do that, as he starts, <laughs> as he lands, like one of his legs starts to buckle. He snaps it back and comes down on Zorpo. 
for a bite attack. Well, natural 19 for a total of 32. I am down. No, that's the total. That's your hit. That was the hit. Oh, oh well, yeah, that hits. I have an AC of 10. <laughs> uh, uh, 18 points of piercing damage plus three points of poison damage as it bites into you. Oh. Are you down? No, I'm no. still up. Okay. Thanks to that mask here wounds. Or healing order, whatever it was. All right, top of the round, Gamora. Look, I've got no qualms with dragons. We're descended from dragons, right? But but what whatever the fuck happened to you ain't natural. So you just you gotta go back to being what you were a minute ago. You know, corpse on the ground. I'm gonna run back up to the dragon, and I'm taking some swings recklessly. That's a 25 to hit. 25 hits? That's 12 slashing. I'm sure I'm still doing this wrong, but that's okay. I'll figure it out later. This is my first time playing this one. I'm going to attack again. Dang, why can't I hit a natural 20? 19 uh, and an 18. 28, 28 to hit. Hits. 28 hits. 13. 13 points of damage? Yes. And um, my draconic cry that I think everyone forgot about is ended on my turn. Everyone had advantage on attacks before that. Oh. Yes, sir. I walked off for a minute because my dog was barking at the door, or else I would have reminded people I'm sorry. Nah, it's all good. All right. Is that your turn? Turn. Alright. Uh Tats and Gene, you're on deck. Alright. Um half your movement to stand up. I will stand up. And right. I will jump on this dragon with my daggers and pierce into it. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to ride this thing. All right. I like it. Give me a athletics check or acrobatics, your choice. <laughs> um, okay. Nineteen. Nineteen just hits. Oh, sorry. That's for the jump. Yeah, you land That's on to jump. Yeah. So now I'm attacking. Now you can roll your attacks. Oof. <laughs> no. I will give you advantage because you're on its back. It makes sense that you jumped on its back and it can't really see you. So I'm going to nope. give you advantage. <laughs> nope. 13. No, right click it and roll with advantage. There you go. 23 hits. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Eight of piercing now. Don't you have sneak attack? That's what I was just, I was just looking at. I, I, I thought there was a double attack or, or something that I could do that well, again. You take, well, you take eight and then you have sneak attack, which is at the bottom of your fe features or whatever page. And I you think should be doing a ton of damage right now. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Um, okay. Guys, what's it called? Uh, sneak, sneak attack. Okay, here we go. Here we go. 
Yeah, it should be seven. Feel an extra seven d six. Okay, great. That's cool. I can do that now. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Very cool. Let's do this. Thirty-five. Woo! You want to describe how you do all this amount of damage? I'm taking my little daggers and I'm just climbing in its neck and stabbing it so many times, like a like a like a spider, just like all up its neck and whatnot, very very quickly. Nice. Oh. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, acting your turn. Uh, he's gonna wipe, use his tail, legendary action to do a tail swipe at you to get you off its back. <laughs> Does a 27 hit you? I'm assuming yes. it does. Yes, it does. Take. That's armor class, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you take 18 bludgeoning damage. I need you to make a debt save. All right. Dex save is 18. And how much points? 18 points of bludgeoning damage. 18. Um. I'm using the same debt save for the wings, so uh, you fail, and you fall to the ground, and you're going to take three points of bludgeoning damage as you land on the ground. Crawl. Aw, oh, can I use my reaction to try and catch him? <laughs> sure, if you would like to. Give me a, a acrobatics or... Debt, debt save? I don't care. Whichever one you want to use. I'll use dex. Because I have advantage on that. <laughs> What'd you get? 11? An 11. I rolled. Shit. I'll say you have the damage, so you take one point of bludgeoning damage tags. As you catch him, you kind of buckle to, and it's like his back hits, or his tail hits the ground a little hard, so you take one point of bludgeoning damage, not Three. <laughs> Alrighty. Gene, you're up. And Shata, you're on deck. Alright, I'm gonna move my um spirit weapon closer again. Uh 20 feet. That's all I can do on that one for that. But then I'm going to rush forward and swing with my um lightbreaker. Yep. For sure you have an extra ability for undead on there, so make sure you do that yes. as well. 13 plus 9 is 22. 22 hits. A D8 for a blessed strike. Four radiant damage. and How much? Four radiant damage? Yeah, four radiant damage for the blessed strike. If I hit with that. I don't know if there's anything. <laughs> If there was any special items, you would hit any Sorry. Let me see what it does. I think it's slow as well. Uh, going may still one S or D sits, so you get to roll another D sits damage towards it. I got six. All righty. As you see, Gene stand up, come up this glowing red mace as she pumps a little bit of extra dam or power into it as it crunches down to the side. <laughs> Is that your turn, Gene? 
That's my turn, yeah. Zorpo, and then Festress, you're on deck. No oh, wait, I skipped Shata, didn't I? I'm sorry, Shata, you're up, no, you're and then Zorpo, you're on deck. Okay. I look up at this dragon, and I'm I'm thinking to myself, Irene, help us. And I take two more swipes at it you run for up to 26 it. and 16. 26 cents to 16 does not. You run okay. up and step over uh, uh, Tad's prone body and come up and slash into it for eight damage. Nice. Can I use a reaction to pick him up, or is that not a thing, or is that an action? I'll let you use your reaction to pick him up if you like to get him off the ground. Okay. Uh, you just so I take my swipes. I look down and I, I reach a hand out to tags to try to pick him up. Easy enough. But you just don't have a reaction now. Okay. Better be for me. All right, Zorpo, and then Festress, you're on deck. All right, let's lob another vitriolic spear at uh, the lich. So another uh, deck saving throw, DC 18. It's This is the Eldritch Blast for wizards. <laughs> you want to guess what I rolled, Zorpho? Is it a one or an 18? Two nat ones. Hmm. Yeah. All Delicious. right. Wow. So Why'd takes... you bring Josh's dice over? <laughs> Jones's <laughs> dice. <laughs> uh, well, he takes seven from last time. Seven. Oh, yeah, that's right. Thank you for reminding me. Mm-hmm. And he'll take 27 this time. All right. We got two more uh, D20s out of the bag here because all those are in jail. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Free the dice. Yes. Bring them back. All right. Uh, and just for flavor, uh, Zorpo's going to like stick his head out from under the bridge and flip him off. <laughs> all righty. Um, Festress. And he's struggling to stay together. His body parts after that last hit, Zorpo. <laughs> he's struggling to <laughs> crack his bones back into place. Well, um... <clears throat> you know, I was going to do another cantrip, but I think I'm going to do a uh, chromatic orb at the fourth level. Ooh. Oh. Twenty okay, auto rolls everything. Twenty-eight points of what type of damage? Uh let's make it frost since I just did chill touch last time. Alrighty. Uh would Frestress, would you like to describe this final blow to this dragon and what it looks like? After seeing it take this tremendous amount of damage from my all too capable allies, I create this small ball of ice and the diamond in my hand transforms, but not much physically as it becomes a shard of ice and hurls itself towards the dragon in a spiral fashion. When it connects from the base of the ground where its paws touch the earth, the frost seems to creep up to it, almost preserving its magnificent glory in place as it stops to move as frequently as it was before. Nice. As it falls to a pile of domes, rotting acid into the ground. Turn zero. Ah, the dark figure, this red hooded creature that's flying 60 feet in the air descends a little bit slower uh, lower sorry Jean you walk among the living acting as you, though you belong you revere the dead for the piety of a decaying god do you think the souls of those who die here are passed on to Velmaros you are a fool a soul here 
is like fog. You leave it to linger on the ground until it inevitably dissipates into nothingness forever. You could be more. You could be free of the shackles of this cycle. You could rise to lead us. My sword and my shield would be at your service. You could join us. Join us. Join us and be free. And with that, he starts to rise back up into the sky. And then he disappears. Plaza away. Don't you need Gene to make a save or a history? Yeah, Gene, mm -hmm. uh, can you give me a history check, please? Yes, ma'am. A uh, 17? A 17. You know, something seems oddly familiar about that that creature. Um, definitely, like, he was definitely trying to attack you. But at the same time, he seemed almost somewhat deferential to you. And there's something about that, that, fry, that phrase that he said right at the end. He said, my sword... And my shield would be at your service. Would, would will be at your service, and it's just it just keeps on ringing through your mind. You've heard that before. Just something seems like disturbingly familiar. Mm -hmm. We are out with of that, combat. Yeah, we are out of combat. And with that, we'll go ahead and take our break. So go get your refreshments and all that, and uh, we'll be back, guys. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, that was a great first combat. Uh, I'm going to talk to the stream for a second. You guys, thank you for tuning in so far. Uh, again, uh, stretch goals, scan the QR code to see the stretch goals. Another uh, $25 for the gold, they'll get Isolde's uh, inspiration. Um, and then exclamation point ticket if you would like to enter the giveaway, which is a pack of your choice from Loot Studios. Uh, they create amazing SDL files. And you get a pack of your choice courtesy of Goblets and Warlocks. So thank you for guys for tuning in. So make sure exclamation point ticket to get you entered in. And you have to be here at the end of the stream to get that. Because we'll roll it at the end of the stream. That being said, thank you, uh, Gilded Creek, for the subscription. And G Frankie for the follow from earlier. I don't know if I said it earlier or not. Please don't tell people that lowers the chances of winning. <laughs> All right. With that being said. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, make sure you get those donations in. Uh, got some pretty cool stuff in there. Uh, with that being said, we'll change from this music because I'm tired of listening to it. Play the campfire and nighttime forest, yeah, which is super loud. Turn that down. Uh, the fight is over, guys. What y'all like to do? I'd like to. <laughs> Hmm? Thank you for the save, guys. Oh. Who the hell are you? And what was that? That? I have no idea. They've been hot. There's been a lot of undead lately. But my name is Jean. Um, nice to meet you. I can't yes, say the same. Yeah, there's a lot of undead, but none of them know us by name. Jean. Yeah, that's a bit strange. That was the first time I've dealt with that, too. The fact that he's Said, the fact that he said and uh, hmm. could be someone I know or knew. Interesting recruitment process. <laughs> what did it mean by how many times have you died? Uh, well, I went down. I don't think he meant dead dead or trying to. Remember, I know the conscious one. I'm very tight. I like the roll to tell the truth. Roll an insight check. 
<laughs> you have no idea if I'm telling the truth or not. And I rolled a 17, so. Yeah, I'll just stare. <laughs> well, are you going to introduce yourself or just me here? Well, we don't need to stay with you, so I don't think we need to introduce ourselves to you either. You can just go along and keep your troubles away from us. Actually, first, you need to pay us for helping you. Cough up some money. Zarpo immediately oh, just walks up, sticks a hand out, and goes, Oh, hello. Do you like books? Hi, Zarpo. Yes, I do. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hello. Have you ever found yourselves in the uh, yes, Pirate so Isles? No, sadly, I cannot say. Oh, awesome. uh, wondrous place, but hey, didn't like a little adventure. Uh, what brings you to this part of the world? Well, I live in the town not too far away, and right now I've been dealing with undead, and that seems to be un unfortunate event. Again, happening weekly now, and it's been very annoying. Well, I, I am Festerus, and I am much a fan of the undead, so you seem like someone who attracts those of great undead powers. I'm shocked on my lure. I'm just going to scurry up real quick-like. Just stick my little tiny hand out. I'm Dags. Nice to meet you. The grumpy one? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I got tags, I got Shakta, Zorpo, Festerus, and Grumpy. You owe me a potion. Toss you my, my healing potion that I have. There, happy. Did you say oh, well, you were from a town nearby? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dildravia. Yeah. Yeah, I'll drive you. Uh, we're headed that way. Well, I could uh, sort you there so I think you can take go to the Majestic Inn and at least rest there for a bit. Well, I head back to my place, so. It's about a day's travel back up. It's gonna take a while. Thesaurus, is there anything on that dragon you might want to bring with you for a souvenir? <laughs> Any bones? Is there anything left on the corpse? I was I'll definitely let, checking it out. I'll let Izoli take care of that one. Uh, yeah, do you want to give me a survival check? Fifteen. A fifth... Do you want guidance from someone? Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Okay, um... Um... With a 29, you can definitely see that there is, well, the corpse itself is is quickly decaying. Uh, whatever magic was cast on this dragon, it it seems to still be decaying and rotting. It was like the speeding up of its natural decay process. Um, <clears throat> you think if you were to go in immediately and get one of its bones, you might be able to you know sever it from there, but uh, you could probably only manage to get one. I... I'm thinking I'm going to, I'm think yeah, I'm, I'm going for a canine. I'm going to use my daggers and I'm just going to get in there and get a canine out. If I can get it out quickly, I might go for another tooth. Okay, this canine is like the size of your entire arm. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to have you do a, either a, athletics or acrobatics to see how well you can manage to get this out. Or, or you know what, thievery check if you really want. Can I help him? Sure. Okay, I'm definitely climbing up in there, and I'm going acrobatics because it's uh, my best number. Well, you sure, and you have advantage. you have advantage because oh, uh, shocked shocked Malor has given you the help action. Okay, okay. Twenty four. Twenty four. Yeah, you managed to like uh, with his help, you managed to like pull down on this canine. And you just hear that, like, that suction sound as it pulls and recedes from the gums of this, like, rotten mouth. Um, 
the smell is disgusting because that <laughs> must be like some sort of like decaying maggot filled cavity that's in there now and it pops out uh you fall back down to the ground you're covered with a bit of a black ichor but you now have about a full arm's length of canine tooth from a dragon i'm gonna uh tags is gonna be tags is gonna start licking it like a popsicle licking it i would like you to do a constitution saving throw please (laughs) uh all right oh a five yeah it immediately starts to burn your mouth spice uh, give me a 1d4 uh, of damage, please. This is going to be some sort of like a poisony acid damage here. Three <clears throat> damage. Ooh. Three damage, yeah. You're going to take oh. three three <laughs> acidic damage as this black acre gets on your tongue. And uh, nothing tastes right for the next like a couple of hours. So if you're going to eat anything, it all tastes disgusting now. Okay. Now, as you do that... The rest of the dragon does start to decay beyond any 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 recognition. It's getting to become a pile of goo now. Pesterus is relishing in the aroma of rotten decay, uh, almost aphrodisiac type towards him. Y'all are weird. Sticking like Tags? cotton balls up up his nostrils so he doesn't have to smell it. Tags has got like teary eyed, like like as if he's had like a really really spicy, you know. And I'm just gonna hold it up to. Uh, sorry, what's your name? What's your name, Festerus? I'm just gonna be holding it up to Festerus and be like, try it, you like it? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go that away. Uh... Yeah, you, you see her turn around and start to walk off. Come back here, Jean. Hey, uh, I'm done that, with you. But what do you mean? Don't you be weird. Have, like, we have unfinished business. It's, what do you mean by unfinished business? We saved your life. You owe us a place to sleep tonight. Yeah. Don't be running away. And, and how am I going to do that when the day away village is? I'm going to have to sleep out here for now. Then we will sleep in your house in a day away. Okay. The- you are not sleeping in my house. I will get you room and board at the Majestic, but that's about it. We'll figure that out. Uh, Festerus, I have a bag here that can hold that dragon tooth easily, if you don't mind. Uh, sure, but I'm going to... He's going to, like, wipe some of the sticky ichor off, and uh, first he's going to, you know, sample it like he uh, was beckoned by Tags to do, and then with the rest of it, he's going to kind of like put it on his neck as if it were cologne so that he gets to smell it for a while to come yet. A little below the nose there. Yeah, I think we're also going to have to do another constitution saving throw, please. <laughs> Eleven. <clears throat> okay, it, it it burns the skin. You can definitely feel like a prickly, it's like a chemical face peel. Um, not overly pleasant, but not terrible. Everything of extreme value in this world or pleasure comes with a little bit of pain. Isn't that right? Now, if we're in the <laughs> game of settling up debts, well, Miss Jean, I suppose you owe me a little bit of blood. Might I recover that debt now? Catch me and you'll drop. You don't want my blood. Okay. We're not doing this. I just want a little bit. No. And first off, why are there kobolds and... Jean ties? Together. Ro- That's strange. Ro- Romy survival <laughs> or history check. Oh, history check? All right. Yeah. Okay. This is fucking actually... <laughs> Seven. Uh, humanoid thingies? Yeah, you're not sure what these are. You read about kobolds. Okay. Strange humans with weird eyes. Um, they each are you have, know, and they're, they also have like veins uh, part of their mouth. 
Okay. Oh, sorry. Do not need to do that. We don't know you an explanation. We're just heading to Yodravia. Is there a reason you're heading to the little town of the Yodravia? We're looking for a book. Okay, very helpful. What kind of book? Casual you guys need help with that. I can't fucking remember Known what it's called. <laughs> Known by Soul Flux, if you've seen it. Yes, it's called the Soul Flux. It's uh, kind of the book of life and death, so to speak. Gene, they without... say that it's made with human skin and, and it's written on pages of dried carcasses. Wouldn't believe it. It's a holy book. Gene, <clears throat> some of that does seem to ring true to you. Specifically when, when Zorpo mentions it being the book of the life and death, that that seems to ring true just a little bit. But that to you is a myth. It's, uh, and it was said it was an artifact of your god. What do you, whoa, what do you know about the life and death book? That's myth. Not, you guys. not much, honestly. It's just it's a book of great mystery and power. And you're looking for the church. It must be returned. Yeah, the church is on Morrow. After we examined it thoroughly, of course. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's not. Okay. Nope. Nope. Not getting this tonight. So you guys are not going to let me leave, and you guys want repaying your some good. How are we going to handle this? You got us back into town. And then we talk about room and board. Fine. Heal. And I'm going to shake on it because that means nothing else is being added to that. Um, I, we should have covered this beforehand. Uh, mm -hmm. Mora, Taj, uh, Shatama, Melar, Festris, and Zorpo. She is very different from any human that you've ever met. Her skin is completely pale, paler than normal, than unusually normal. I don't think I noticed that before, and she did go down on Pudge, so it's probably from Bloodless. I don't care. You don't get Would we... sun, do you? Does that sound good with you guys? No. Right on board, or do you guys want something else from her? I know Festus wants a little bit of blood, but it's not a big deal. Just a small no. amount. Just as much as he gave you, I think it's fair trade. Just sign this book here. Just keep track of everyone that I've adventured with. Yeah, no, I'm not signing anything. Hmm. Nice try, but no. <laughs> it's just oh. a guest book. Uh huh. Yeah, sure. Dealt with enough right, wizards right. to know the difference. Your flying friend from earlier seemed to have immense control over life and death. Yet he offered his fealty unto you. If I joined him, which that's not gonna happen. Against my god. Goddess. Depending on what they feel like. But now they're being god. It's against their beliefs and my beliefs. That's not gonna happen. Being dead, you can stay dead. Sounds like they have an opening, Festress. You guys ready to head over? Yeah, I'm done it talking is, about books. It is also the middle of the night. We might have to camp here for the night. I can talk about books all day. At, as we walk anywhere, so. I just want to... Tags is going to be holding the the tooth and he's going to start to scratch at it with his knife in like a direction 
and start to carve something into it. Didn't you put the tooth in the bag of holding? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, oh, Fester's wait, had it. He licked it, and then <clears> I took <throat> it, and then I put it in a bag of holding. Oh. So you don't, yeah, it's in a bag of holding now. You don't have it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's quite large. You have to, like, tie it up. So we just... So if you want the tooth, you have to ask for it back from Shikata. Shataka. Oh, yeah, okay. Can... <laughs> <laughs> Can I have the tooth back? What are you going to do with the tags? I'm making some. All right, because you can make something else with it if you don't damage it. We can I'm give it to a real craftsman tag. Taking... And you can really <clears throat> make something. Uh, oh, yeah. But if you want it, I'll give it to you. I know what I'm making. All right. Reach into I the bag. I hand him the tooth. I'm just scratching at it as we walk somewhere. What time is it? Above table? It, uh, it's getting pretty late. Okay. Because y'all are cap in twilight hour. And y'all are preparing mm. for camp as it was. Then we should probably camp here. Just away from that corpse. Maybe down river. Camp in the same spot that two creatures found us in. Yeah, but down river. Where we were, but further down. Okay. Right. And we set up camp. Right. I'll take first watch. Just say you move down river. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oddly enough, the stream kind of forms the same. It's a better bridge. <laughs> a nicer bridge. I'm not going near the bridge this time. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> the bridge. Yeah, <laughs> that's what caused it. It's yeah. like a Flintstone cartoon where you <laughs> run down the hill and it's the same background. No more bridge. Gene, would you like to get close to the fire, or does the cold not affect? I'm good. Appreciate it. Hmm. I'm going to be on the edges. But still, so <laughs> happy that I can find on you. So just as a reminder, you only you uh, those of you coming from the swamp, you probably have enough rations for this final day of the journey, uh, and then you're kind of running out of food. Mm. One more day to get there, you said. Yep. Yeah. That's not time. Tags probably go back to fishing on his watch, I guess. So just kind of while he's awake, he'll be kind of using his spear to to get stuff in the night. You want to go hunting? Yeah, let's catch a fish. All right. A big un. All right. Uh, Zolda, you want to take narrative control on that? Ooh, um, I actually have no idea how fishing works in D&D. Um, I'll say survival check to see if they even see one first. Yeah, let's okay. do that. Go go ahead and grab your survival check. All right. 17. 17. Yeah, let's say, let's put them right by that bend right there. You're kind of looking over to the rocks to your left, and you're just watching. You're sitting there for like, you know, three, three, four, five, ten minutes. And uh, suddenly you see a little a little ripple. In, in the um, in the water. Um, what would you like to do? Mm, I will just pierce it with my spear. All right. Can you give me a, a uh, an attack roll, please, with your spear? This is the DC of a fish. <laughs> Uh, 
long as he doesn't okay. want it, so you should, I'll say he'd be fine. Oh, bl okay, I see. Here, see here. Here we go. <laughs> All right. 21. Yeah, you just, like, strike down. You don't even feel it go into the fish, but you definitely see this, like, and this fish is just, like, thrashing back and forth in the end of your spear. I'm going to bite its head off. <laughs> you successively do so. There are guts uh, streaming down your scaled chin. We have a Smeagol. <laughs> Did you at least take it off the spear, or are you just like eating it like a kebab? Oh, no, that's like a kebab. All right. Uh, Jean, what are you doing? Uh, I'm taking out my rations and just kind of watching this. Everyone, keeping an eye on everyone, like they're keeping an eye on me. All right. Zorpo, what are you doing? Uh, reading. I'm going to read. You, what are you reading? Uh, I am reading a book on uh, enchantment, specifically. Uh, and it's Enchanting Tales of uh, of Faerun. Or, sorry, what is the name of this world again? Betis. <laughs> Betis. That. that. Alright. Festress, what are you doing? Festress is uh, slightly sitting away from the group, not extremely far. Definitely uh, can still see light flickering from the fire, and he's um, he's pulled out a little skull that he's uh, kind of whispering to and talking to, and he seems excited as he's doing so. Like, uh, if anybody tries to listen to what he says, you would hear certain things like, and then the living dragon turned into a Undead dragon, just like that. Like he's recapping the events of the day's journey. Nice. Gamora, what are you doing? Gamora, sorry. I am going to step a little bit away from the group and just keep my eye on everything. I'm keeping watch, splitting my attention between this weirdo woman and anything else that might come up on us. So I should probably think some of my crew are weird since one of them is fucking reading right now when we're supposed to be sleeping and then the other one's reading an invisible diary of some sort. All right, we already discussed what Tads is doing. Uh, Shata. Shakata. There we go. Shakata. So uh, I'm going to top off my water skin to get a little bit extra to drink for the next day and start settling in for the night. Got being said, uh, who are, is am I taking watches? What are y'all doing? I'm taking watch. You may want to take a watch with you. Uh, I'll take a watch. All with right. her. All right. Who has second watch? I'll do it. And Festress. So that means Shataka and Jean will take last watch. Wonderful. All right. Sounds good with me. All right. Uh, so first watch, Sorpo and Gamar, you can roll perception checks and then chat. So you can have a chat with each other if you like. That's a nat one or an eight. You're definitely reading instead of helping me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is a 19. <laughs> I like how watch means completely different things to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> uh, Grim, <clears throat> not a lot exciting is happening on this watch. Uh, to your relief, there's no new creatures that seem to come out from the swamp, nor is there any weird undead things flying in the skies. Uh, you do hear just the calming and generic sounds of woodland creature. Not woodland, but, you know, creatures, crickets, uh, the occasional hoot of an owl. Is the owl anywhere near me? It seems to be in the distance. I think it needs to be a lot closer for that to work. I am going to take 10 minutes to cast Speak with Animals.
And I'm going to spend an hour of the watch uh, casting Find Familiar. Nice. Uh, let's resolve Grim first, then Zorpo. Uh, Grim, as you're casting this, uh, that lasts for what, an hour? Ten minutes. Okay, only ten Oh, minutes. you mean the, the spell? Yeah. The cast takes ten minutes, but how long does the yeah. spell last? Uh, duration ten minutes. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll say that. Yeah. If you're if you're really patient, um, give me a stealth roll to see if you can get close to an owl without it running away. Okay. Uh, twenty three. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of managed to like head in the general direction of this owl, uh, or the owl sound. Um, and, uh, you just hear it hooting in the, uh, hooting pretty close by. Is there anything you'd like to say to this owl? Do you see anything up there? The moon. The moon. See the moon. No enemies. Nothing else. There's some rats. Not enemies, but food. Rats. Oh, oh, can you catch me some? What will you give me? I won't kill you. The owl is wise. And it considers this. Do you have anything shiny in addition? Uh, I'll have another head axe. Or any of my gold. Uh, it hoots in your general direction of your purse. It's a very greedy owl. Uh, I'll take out one of the gold and hold it up in the air then. It flies down and grasps at your hand. Do you let it take the gold? Not yet. Oh, its claws are like you get right this. around. You, you get this when you get the rat. Oh. All right. I'll be back. And it flies away. And you can see it kind of soaring fairly high above. And then really quickly, it just like shoots right down into the into the grassy area and then swoop right back up. And you can see in its talons, you see it having a little rat that's writhing back and forth in its claws. And it flies over to you. With its free claw, it lands on your hand. Uh, if you have, if your hand is a bear, it's probably digging in, um, and it's waiting for you to take the uh, to take the rat. I'll take the rat and open the other hand for the gold. You can have. It like try, tries to claw at the gold. It, it kind of manages to get it. Ooh, thank you. Ooh, and it flies away. Zorpo watches <laughs> all this take place. <laughs> See, that's how you hunt. <laughs> I've never been what I've never been much for hunting. I just I like to hunt for a good story, a good book now and then. You're fucking weird. I'm gonna eat this rock. I like how our kobolds are really feral, except for one. <laughs> uh, Zorpo, uh, tell me about your your familiar and how you're casting this. And what I have to paint. <laughs> a tiny spider. <laughs> just a tiny one? Yeah, just a ti little tiny spider. Uh, hold on, I'm trying to find it on my character sheet. Yes, his name is Scoots. Uh, he's a little, uh, a little celestial spider, so he glows kind of, kind of a, a golden color. Uh, he's he's not solid black like your your normal spider, um, and he uh, I get the incense and, and everything ready and start the ritual cast. Uh, I think it takes a, an hour. It takes an hour, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and or an hour and ten, I think. We're getting a ray from Reality Break Twenty. Welcome in, everybody. It's your stream. Thank you for the raid. Welcome into our charity stream. Uh, we are half by halfway through the sesh. Uh, they're all standing watching. Miss, you missed a massive fight. 
Um, but uh, yeah, Breast Cancer Resource Foundation is the month, the charity that we do, and since it's October, yeah. So fifty every fifty dollar donation, you get uh, bracelets and a sticker if you like. Uh, at least fifty dollar donations. Uh, if you want to enter into giveaway tonight, tonight's giveaway is from Loot Studios, a pack of your choice. Uh, you just have to DM me your uh, email, and we can get the pack of your choice. Loot Studios is an SDL file company. You can print off three D miniatures of your choice. That's tonight's giveaway. So exclamation point ticket to enter in. You do have to be here at the end of stream when we do draw it. Thank you for the raid and. Uh, if you scan the QR code, you can see the stretch goals for our uh, giveaways. Our, our stretch goals for the rewards for the players. All right, Zerpo, as you're casting this, the, uh, the smoke from the incense kind of swirls and pools in front of you, and then you suddenly see one little tiny leg, little golden leg kind of reach out. And another one, followed by six other ones. And it kind of pops up its little, its little thorax kind of scoots, well his name is Scoots, he kind of scoots along the ground up onto your onto your li lower limb and starts to crawl up the side of your leg, quickly scurrying up and kind of rests right on your shoulder. I, I, I pick him up and put him on top of my hat where he normally sits and, mm. uh, and, uh, like, oh, this is, P please don't eat him though. You can eat the rat, just don't eat him. Why would I eat that? That's disgusting. I don't know you. I don't know where that's been. Yeah. I I conjure him out of out of out of my little brazier here. I can't imagine that's much sustenance anyway. No, he does kind of disappear when you, when he dies, and I can just conjure him again later. It just yes. it can be a little expensive with all of the the charcoal and the herbs and the incense and such things. So it it can't die, basically. Basically, yes. I kind of want to test that. I did I'll trade just... you the other half of my fish for the other half of your rat. You're asleep. You're asleep. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry. <laughs> I thought we were talking. Sorry. They are, no, they're on just... watch. Did you see much of anything out there? I haven't exactly been paying attention. <laughs> Very good yeah, you're, story. Yeah, you're useless at watching. There's nothing around but rats. And I know. Well, those tend to be very wise. I don't know how wise this one is. He wanted gold. What the hell is it going to do with gold? It's a good question. You wanted something shiny. Start making, I started making notes about owls wanting money. <laughs> this new, like, revelation. Well, what did he even buy? Probably, I don't know. Maybe. I want to communicate with something. To... Okay. Draw out letter. Does it know how to read? What is it with your eyes, and books, and reading? Jesus. The rest of your watch comes without issue. You want to wake up the next set, which would be Tags and Festress. I'll wake up Tags, and I'll still be munching on my rat while I'm doing it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna reach over to my spear and and rip off the butt end of the fish, and go for a trade. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> um, Tags is gonna be focused on carving into these teeth, just about as useless on a watch as Zorpo was. <laughs> All right, uh, so, well, first off, Zorpo, what's your interaction? How you wake up Festress? Go over and just pointy finger, jab, 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 jab. Hello. <clears throat> Are you alive? Hello, Zorpo. Yes. 
Unfortunately so. I think it is your turn to, you know, observe. Ah, well then, observe I shall. <clears throat> the, uh, this spot is rather warm if you're uh, ready for your rest time. Oh, that would be lovely, the, the cold-blooded nature. Anything to help keep me warm. Well, uh, good night to you then. I, uh, where's Tags at? That way. And points over in Tags' direction, and I will lay down. And I'll head over that way. Perception chats, and then you're going to have a little conversation. Eleven. Uh, twenty-six. <laughs> very similar role from a co- uh, but uh, uh, yeah, very very similar roles. Um, <clears throat> Bestris, um, what exactly is preoccupying your mind right now that you're only getting an eleven perception? Well, I'm quite curious what he's planning to do with all of that remains that he seems to be in possession of, and I'm also very interested in letting Gomez here get some fresh air. So I might be more attending to my pack and doing my personal doings rather than observing what everybody else would want me to be observing. Well, thankfully, nothing overly eventful seems to be happening in your near vicinity, so good for you. Um, tags. Uh, you said at 26? Yeah. 29? Yeah, 26. Yeah, so um, you're sitting there. You're kind of you're kind of chipping away, I'm guessing, with like a small dagger against this this, this big teeth. Um, your mind is, is definitely focused mainly on that, on that but uh, you're keeping an eye out. You're looking towards the swamp, um, looking for any new dragons flying out of the sky. Um, nothing seems to be really, really occurring. There's not even a single hoot of an owl. It seems that that's gone as well. Um, the night is just quiet. Just, uh, you hear the open, the open air, small, soft breeze occasionally, the sound of the water rippling. Uh, nothing, nothing seems to stick out to you. I'm going to, uh, I am, I picture tags just kind of up sitting in a tree branch somewhere. On a moonlight fire, but within speaking different distance with uh, Festress, and he's but, just gonna say, uh, "What do you do with your trophies?" Well, I love to keep my trophies with me, especially those that are dear to my heart and he's got this excited look that he's going to show you something he doesn't always show but given his new understanding of your interest in to his mind the necrotic he uh he, he reveals the full the full body and he takes the skull that he might have talked to and shoves the skull back on if it would have fell on that says um yeah i would like you to meet my brother <laughs> Tags is gonna use his tail to like hold onto the branch, but just kind of like drop down and hang and try to be like eye level with this skeleton, but like upside down. Be like, hi. Oh, he can't talk. He's been dead for some time. But I still think he can hear us sometimes. So I, I love to tell him all the stories of the adventures that I'm that I've been on. If you look Do you disappointed, think he remembers. All, do you do you think do you think he remembers? Well I don't guess that I know. But I know that one day I shall find a way to bring him back to his old state. And then I shall know whether or not he remembers all these stories that I share with him. Um, 
egg says. Um. I like to make old things into new things. With my trophies, I turn them into stuff. I'm trying to make daggers. And I'm... I'm been carving the tooth straight down vertically on both sides to like eventually split the canine into two knives. I appreciate that you do not waste anything. These daggers, uh, I suppose, have good potential to be useful weapons. Although I do think the bone itself, or the tooth itself, rather, makes for a far more interesting story than a useful weapon, no? <laughs> That's pretty lame. And I'm just going to curl back up into the branch. <laughs> My family is rich! We have gold! Lots of gold! I think I'm with that, nothing else exciting happens with your with your watch. Uh, how would you like to go and wake up uh, Shocked and Malor? Oh, sorry, Perfect. yeah, go ahead. I forgot I was muted. Uh, Safoon just donated $80.08, basically making boob out of the numbers. Clever, clever, sir. Clever. Um, Amazing. We're now hit, totally here for it. We're now hit a stretch goal. A couple of them, don't we? Uh, no, we should no. hit the first. Yeah, just the yeah. first one. Yeah. So everybody gets a Zoldi's inspiration. Is that cool? Yes. So for the for everyone in in the chat, since we have two GMs, uh, if you get Jugan's inspiration, you get to reroll one of your own d20s. If you get my inspiration, which they both have both of now, uh, you can reroll one of your enemies' in, uh, d20 rolls. So um, both a, a boon and a, and, a, and a bane. Thank you, Safoon, for the lovely donation. You're now the m top giver right now. All right. Uh, Tads and Festress, uh, who are y'all waking up? Which one's y'all waking up? Who's who's going on watch? Gene and Shata, Shata, Shakata. Shata. I'm gonna mess that up the whole fucking time. I know it. You haven't got it Shata. right once yet. <laughs> no. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Shata. I don't know. Fuck. Shakata. 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 Okay, so separate them. Got it. Shata. Yep. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna waddle over to to Gene, and I'm being very deliberate and just like. Shaking and wake up. Was it necessary? Your turn. <laughs> I'm just gonna curl into the warm spot. Just gonna kind of push with my feet. Just kind of get going. Uh, hey, okay. Jeez. <laughs> wakey, wakey. As faster as wake up, shata. Shata. I would, uh, I'm gonna. Festus is going to walk and stand directly over him, like uh, one leg to each side of, of Shakta, and he's going to squat down and put his face like really, really close to Shakta's face, and, uh, and then he'll just say, Shakta, it's your turn. Time to get up. I'm going to open my eyes as I look up, and I'm going to, good morning, sunshine. And I'm going to sit up, and uh, Go to that just what? that slight bend in the river. All right, uh, Gene and Shata, since y'all were the last ones, you get your full rest, so you can both take a long rest while everybody else finishes theirs. <laughs> and you want perceptions? Yes, please. Fifteen. And from Jean? 21. <clears throat> For both of you, the night goes on fairly uneventful. Um, you do see the sun slowly starting to rise near the end of your uh, near the end of your your watch. Um, 
but for the most part you guys don't see anything at all out of the ordinary a nice calm quiet night so jean how long yeah. you lived in Yeldravia? My whole life. And how long has that been? 31 years. Hmm. And this is a recent thing for you, or has this always been? What? What's she talking about? Uh, undead dragons, flying what? spectral, uh, oh. bad guys. <laughs> well, the undead has been a little bit more recent than normally the last eight months. But fighting in general, not so much. You said you don't know why they're following you? No, no idea. What were you doing eight months ago, Jean? Uh, a lot happened. We got attacked by undead. Saved the city, the town, lost some people, and accidentally re released a goddess. So a lot has happened. And then I, I was like kind of facing, observing, and then I looked back at the release the goddess part. You did a what? It's not on purpose. It was what we were trying to prevent, but it didn't work out that way. And I was stuck in a bubble, so I couldn't do anything anyways. So I wouldn't help myself because someone betrayed us. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, was this goddess... Um, less than cool, or? Pretty evil. Oh. Alright, good community service. Okay. How many of uh, your friends are still around from that? Well, we all survived beside the tra traitor, so Alice? The only one who died was the traitor. Do they live in Yildravia as well? They used to. Okay. Have you considered moving? Maybe that worked for them? No, this is home. Okay. Well, Alright. Home may not be for you, though. But alright. That's fine with me. What about you? You're asking a lot about me. What about me? What would you like yeah. to know? Well, how old are you since you asked my age? 27. Not too much younger than me. No. Um, why are you traveling with these bubbles? Well, one day I hope to be a, uh, a knight in the Holy Order of Irene. So I had a prophetic vision of a book, and I believe it was the Soul Flux. So I'm here with this nerd and these two kobolds, and I'm not sure what Festus really identifies as. And we're out here looking for this book. I wish to return it to the church. As a, a right to prove. Which church? I the Church of Irene. Jean, you would know Irene as a very minor god. Um, very recent in history. There's not a lot of text about her uh, or them. Um, seems to be a new god. 500 year new god. Yeah, grand scale. Uh, you mean the minor god? That... Okay. Hmm. I, there's not Careful a lot about her. With your words there. Sorry. Sorry. Just compared to other gods I've heard. They're on the not little about bit the on How you use it. That's true. But there's not much written about them yet. That I know of. You have any more on that, or? Yeah, you're a healer, right? Hmm? You're a healer, correct? Yes. I got the god for you. you see, I yeah, no. So, god of healing and redemption. Who's your? Who do you follow? I follow Vomaros, the god of departed souls. Hmm. Sounds like you're in the wrong line of business. No, I'm in the correct plant business. My god, god of healing, which is what you do all day. Good okay. for you. It's food for thought. Because your god definitely almost got everybody here killed. It's all cool. Okay. Bro. That was not my god that came and attacked. I have no idea who that is. Hey, no, 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 no,
But you know who did? Some followers of Irene. Just saying. Take that up with the uh, with your goddess. Uh huh. Sure. You can just see her just go into silence as she contemplates something. I turn over smugly. Not Don't about the Irene. god. No, it's about something else. Hmm. Something that wing creature said. Image of my thoughts. That winged creature has a thing for you. I'm not sure what it is. You be. But it has something. The only one who said that last sentence he said. The only person who said that to me has. He's makes. Where's he at? He's gone. Gone where? The party's so. Well, let me just do the math. So you have a friend who had said something to you in the past who's dead. And we had an undead flying thing say the same thing to you from the past. No connection. It could be, and I have no idea, because hard to kind of recognize. What'd you say his name was? Has. Has. Hmm. Well, if we see it again, I think we should call it by that name. Let's see if it responds. If it does, maybe it's him. If it doesn't, maybe we're wrong. Alright. Worst case scenario, it kills us all. Best case Probably scenario, might do that. it kills us all except for Festress, and he gets a bunch of bones. I don't know. We'll figure this out, but... That seems like another worst case scenario. Scenario, but okay. I don't know. Your, your soul departs. You go to be with your god. I get to be with my god. He's Well, that one can't read it anymore. That'd be unfortunate for her. And I don't know if there's any rats and fish where they're headed, so. I seem to come up with more questions talking to you than I have answers. Might have the wrong god if you got a lot of questions, not a lot of answers. But it's fine. Jean, could you give me an insight roll against yourself? <laughs> Twelve. Twelve. You know, honestly, Velmaros has actually been feeling a little weak. The connection you you would normally had with them, it seems to be just a little little more tenuous. Yeah, I'm not saying anything out loud. That was it for Shakta's line of questioning. He got to know what he wanted. You're on mute. The rest of your watch goes without issue. Everybody wakes up and Anybody, the rest of the four can take the rest of your long rest. Zorpo, you are no longer exhausted. And Gene, you, your exhaustion that you got from the fight is gone as well. What would you like to do? Actually, I guess we have a combat initiative for a reason. Gene, what are you doing in your early morning? Are you preparing spells? Hint, hint, uh, for the rest of the party? Yeah, I'll start preparing spells you might need some more what does that look like as you prepare your spells you can see like um her manipulating her hands with a like black and red glow kind of like like she's gonna pick spells out of her rapport pull what she wants and place with something new Alrighty, zorpo what are you doing in the wee mornings You're muted. Also, I'm mute. 
I will also uh, I will be uh, preparing spells in my spell book. All right, you're just gonna flip. Describe what that looks like. Uh, flipping through, kind of f transferring some into one book, uh, like my kind of daily journal, just like writing down what spells I want for the day. All right, uh, Festress. What does your morning ritual look like? Um, Festress is going to take a, a, a few of the charcoals, the cooled ones, ideally, from the fire. Maybe take some of the ash and put it under his eyes a little heavier. He uses it as a, you know, allows him to see it. It negates some of the brightness of a sunny day, if it's ever so unfortunately a sunny day. And he's also going to be examining his, uh, his spell book, given the conversations and actions of the previous day that if we're coming up against a lot of, you know, creatures in the undead category, that's almost everything he has done up. So as you see him, um, he kind of bites his finger and he writes some letters in the blood of his finger and then in some cases the existing blood, he takes his other finger and it seems to pull the, the blood off the page back into him just as he uh, realigns what spells... Alright, Gamora, what's your morning routine? Probably working out or something like that while they're preparing? <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna get up and stretch, get my axe out and swing it around a little bit. I don't need to play with some stupid books. Give me a performance check. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> uh... With my... Oh wow. Three. <laughs> three. Yeah, uh, you you're so angry or thinking about stupid books and whatever. You're just not very focused on your movements as good. And anybody that looks over looks at you, and you're like your form is not as clean as it was yesterday. Maybe you're maybe you're sore from yesterday or last night. Tags, what does your morning ritual look like? Well. Um, <clears throat> I'm thinking I'm going to climb some trees and look for eggs. I'm going to find, and whether I find eggs or, or bugs first, I'm going to munch on some stuff, and then in the morning sunlight, I'm going to find the best branch possible. Give me and a discussion check. Set aside some time to have a good old sun bake like a good lizard should. Yeah, give me a so, discussion check. Can um, I point out to him where the owl was? Maybe he'll find that nest. Get some gold sure. back. There's probably more gold in that nest. So, so is that a perception with advantage? Uh, with if you're, a, you're actively uh, looking, I'm going to say investigation or survival. Oh. Oh, is that um, just regular flat roll or advantage? It's one of the skills. Um, so it's right okay. beside you. So survival's all right at the bottom. Him. Would he have advantage? Well, uh, he 20. Just, he got a 20 anyway. Yeah, you're able to successfully find uh, two, uh, two bird eggs. Um, not quite sure if it was the owls, the owl eggs that you found, or any other kind of bird-like creature, but you find two bird eggs. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna crack one and just throw it down the gullet right away, and then I'm gonna toss one down to Grim. Ah, uh, thanks, thanks, thanks. Expecting that Grim catches it, you know. And then Definitely I'm going to I'm going to find the sunny branch and just bake in the sun and I will not move a muscle until someone says all right we're going. All right. Uh uh Shakta, what is your morning ritual? Uh I'm going to start packing up all my stuff from where it was before, uh topping off my water again cuz I drank some during uh during the watch idly. And then um, go around and check and see if everyone's ready to go. All right. 
All right, everybody does their morning rituals, and uh, I'm assuming Gene's going to be leading the troop. Uh, all right, you can roll me a perception check, and uh, or actually, you don't let everybody know y'all ready to go, get on the road. Where are we headed to? What do y'all want to do? I'll drive you. Is it uh, yell drive you or bust? Is that the closest town to us right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're day away. Yep, that's where we're headed. That's where Jean's from. You ready to go? <laughs> yes. I, I would like to lead the pack. Do I know the way there? No. No. Okay. If you want to lead, uh, I could say you and Jean could tag team at, like, rolling advantage. Yeah, I, imag I imagined um, on on the... I mean, it's a road. I mean, you're on a road, so you can just follow up the road. Yeah, like, I, I, I like to kind of stay with the group, but not, like, as a, like kind of parallel to the road. Kind of like, like Dabbing I'm doing trees and stuff. Yeah, I'm doing like scout stuff. Got it. I'm kind of I'm things. going to the higher hills. I'm looking across. I'm scanning. I'm keeping up. I'm zigzagging. You know, like a like a pup let loose on a on a trail. Like just all right. Uh, not roll. straying too far. All right. Uh, I'll let uh Zoldi handle that. Uh, what are we doing? They're traveling, and uh, Tads wants to go through the trees. Uh, they yeah. They can talk Sorry. on the way as well. I don't like doing scout stuff. So yeah, I'm can you give me a survival, a survival check as we're doing all of this? Twenty-seven. So Seven. So this is wow. You're rolling everything is super high. Um, this is not a heavily densely forested area, so the trees are somewhat sparse. So you're kind of like you know, lingering around. And then when you see a tree, you kind of like scurry up to the tree to kind of get a, a peek of what's going on. Um, after maybe a few hours of travel, you can actually see just in the fair, far off northern distance, you can start to see the outlines of. Um, a few hills, and on top of the hill, you can see at least one building that's just peeking out, and you kind of have a suspicion that you're probably heading in the right direction. So, you're guessing that Gene is probably leading you in the correct direction. <clears throat> Do I know much about this place? Like, is it like a wretched hive of scum and villainy, or is it like you know some normal? Ooh, let's do a history check as well. You did study up about this place. I mean, you are one of the guides to help help these uh these um these wizards and uh Okay. And I guess holy zealot of some kind into this. Um land. two. A two. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you were paying more attention to the swamp. Like you heard about that swamp and you're like, I got the swamp, guys. This is my jam. I will make yeah. sure we get a, we will get out alive of the swamp. And I mean, we'll, we'll comment. You did lose a couple of companions. There were some few other people, but you know, you did a good job. You did a good job. Yeah. Tags hates the city. Just hates the city. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but what you can see, it doesn't look like a like a huge city. It looks like you know small low crop buildings. Oh, okay. Uh, if anything okay. at all, so it looks so... like a small town. Okay. Um, anybody that has a fairly high, uh, passive investigation. So I think that's also tags. Um, mm. anybody else have something above a 15? I have 17. 17? I have a nine passive investigation. The perception's high. Okay. Okay. I have Sorry. a 20. A 20. Okay. So, uh, Shakta and Zorpo, you're definitely just thinking about something like you came from a swamp. You were on a road. That road led to that bridge, and then that bridge kind of went towards the swamp. But that was it. Like, where did that lead? That road lead to? It just kind of went straight into a swamp. Like, how does how does anything get into this town? Um, can't be a lot of supplies coming in. Uh, wherever you're going, it's going to be a quaint small town that's mostly self-sufficient. 
Um, that's what you're getting. That's what you're. That's what you're assuming from your, your studies, from what you're seeing. Um, there might be another way into the town. Maybe there's a seaport over to the to the coast or a mountain pass up in the north. But this path you're on right now, it you know it, it leads to the swamp, and that's about it. And there's a large mountain range to the east as you're going up as well. Mm -hmm. hmm. Uh, we'll go out of combat initiative again for the journey. Uh, Gene, what are you doing during the travels as you're all doing this? Anybody particularly you want to talk to? Uh, hmm. Kind of leading the way, seeing if someone else wants to talk to me because she's focused on just getting there. Okay. Getting Zorpo. home. Uh, Z Zorpo's going to uh, go up uh, come up behind Jean and kind of tug on her cloak. Um, so this road doesn't seem to go much of anywhere. Um, what's the best place to get to Eldravio? Oh, it's, this is the way to go. This is the way home. Well, I assumed that, but it, like, it's hard to see wh how to get in. Yeah, that's the point. We're excluded. We're self-sufficient. Oh, I see. Um, do you already have Gene roll survival check? Not yet. Roll survival check, Gene. I think or that's a Q. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I only have an eight. I'll I'll give you this much for the eight. Uh, you know there is a pass through the mountains, but you don't know where it's at. You heard you've heard Boar talk about it before. <clears throat> There is a pass to the mountains, but I'm not quite sure where it's located. Otherwise, it's through the swamp. How do you get in? No. Is it, is it dangerous? Cliff sides, mountains, I believe so. Okay. You, you haven't heard of anybody really surviving a mountain pass? Like, it's just... They don't need to know that. <laughs> Festus, what are you doing on this travel? Um, I think I'm going to be uh, kind of keeping pace with Shakta, um, the other Yamti in the party. Um, not necessarily for any particular reason of increased bondage between us, but rather uh, simply because we're kind of the only that seem to be eye level with one another. Aside from Jean, whom has already made it pretty clear she's not ready to pay back her blood debt. So um, I'm going to be traveling with Shakta, but as far as Festress is concerned at the moment, I'm just kind of making super nor casual small talk, nothing. Um, he's sticking to whenever we can get shade in the canopy of the trees. He's preferring not to be in sunlight, but obviously occasionally sunlight hits him and it's not like a problem. He just prefers not to. All right. Grim Grimora. I'm going to uh, scoot back toward those two tall folk in our group. Hey, did she actually say what she was doing a full day's journey away from her town? She's, she, she couldn't have been running from those creatures for that long. I mean, she's, she's a fucking stick. She, she's not athletic enough for that. So did she, did she say why she was running this way for this long or what she was doing? Uh, not in particular, no. But, I mean... Judging from my surroundings, it doesn't look like there's a lot of pastimes to do here, so maybe long walks is the thing. A full days away? That's, that's how she gets her kicks? I mean, look around, Yukimura. I don't think visitors show up, so entertainment must be sparse. I personally... Do I hear this? this gonna... <laughs> uh, perception check. It's going to be a very boring day. Well, actually, we can have them roll uh, stealth against her passive. Yeah, that works. Good luck on that one. Ten? Even with her roll, you don't want to beat it. Twenty-two. Mm. I have high stealth. Yeah. Uh, Gene, what is your passive perception? 20. Yeah. 
Yeah, you don't hear a thing that Gamora's saying, but uh, Shatta, he's he, he's not really trying to keep it quiet, I guess, or he's not paying attention enough. So, Festress, you know, if we if we hang around Jean a little longer, I think you can probably grow your collection there quite a bit. I'm gonna be honest with you, it's not a bad deal. Collection for what? Crossed my mind. Say again, Gene. Collection for what? Uh, he has a, a thing for solidified calcium. He keeps it. Excuse me? Bones, Gene. Bones. Yeah, I kind of got that concept. He loves bones. And the undead, especially. Ah, they you know, after are the, the soul departs, it leaves the bones. He takes that part. Sometimes I take the other part too, the souls, that is. You better not be touching any souls. I don't think you can touch souls. They're corporeal, but yeah. yeah. Calm down, Gamora. It's okay. <laughs> it's all what Festress feels. It is not Gene, so now much. that you're uh, you're in our conversation, uh, just wild question: um, What were you doing a day and a half away from home in the middle of nowhere? Well, I was being chased, so I was eating the thing away from town, so we didn't injure anybody else. Do you run a day and a half away from the town? Yeah. It's no one came to help you. Not a friend. Wait. Not a soul. The only other party members that I'm used to who are able to help me defeat it are no longer in town. So it's me, myself, and I. So your plan was to keep running until we ended up, I don't know, maybe in Aventus? Like, how far were you going to go? Just the edge of the swamp horse and kind of lose it there. Hmm. Perhaps she is... A wanted individual, and maybe I am not wanted. The You're not a criminal, Gene. No, I'm not a criminal. Mm -hmm. But no one wanted to help you. Who's the criminal? Gene has we no need to arrest someone. Town. Okay, I am not risking the lives of people in my town. Right? That is it. They're certainly not risking their lives for you. They don't need to. All right, Gene. We believe you. Gene, we believe her. Uh, I, I don't believe him at all. We don't, Grimora. Uh, Tads, what are you doing while they're having this conversation while you're scouting? Um, okay, so we're going up to this town. It, um, we're going up to this town, I guess. Um, are, do we just approach? I, I'm, I'm ahead, uh, but I'm definitely kind of taking cues from gene and the group behind me is to like are we actually, just walking up to this place is this like actually, a hostile place actually actually i would imagine as they're having this conversation they kind of just stopped in the road to have this conversation you turn around and see them like stopped and they're not moving what do you do um <laughs> um because last you checked, they were traveling behind you, but they stopped traveling. Yeah, I guess I, I... I don't know what I would really do in that moment. I'd, I would just watch them, I guess. How close are we? Do Are we are we right up against, like, town walls? Or, like, what am I... No, or, or is that it, way in the distance? It's way in the distance. You get there by oh, nightfall. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Or I thought I was like so looking over the hill and it was far right as time there. wise, we're like mid morning before midday. Oh, so we got like a good chunk of the day to go. Okay. Yeah. Um And maybe and maybe you feel like if you don't keep pace, you might not make it in time and you see them stopped and standing there. I think I'll go ahead a little bit. Keep on going? All right. A little bit. Uh, give me a survival check. Hmm. As I think 
I'll let Azoldi decide what what you find. Oh yeah, put me on the spot. Thanks. <laughs> I'm trying to think what would be this far south. I find I got a 31. Jesus I Christ. Don't know what might be inside. <laughs> uh, you see tracks in the woods. Um, and with that high enough survival check, you've only read about these. You've never seen them or you studied them. Some form of capacity. These are definitely owlbear trats. Never seen one in person though. Okay. So would I, would I know if, if they, if their feathers or their eggs yeah. or their whatever Without is enough valuable. With that high enough roll, you definitely know. Yeah, Tags, you you would know that an owl bear egg, if you found one, you could crawl inside. <laughs> That's how big Girl. it is. Okay. You could, like, cut it's more about the size hole. of your tooth. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> okay. Um. Or, okay, I gotta think about what I want to do here. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. <laughs> okay. Can I, can I roll perception to see if I see the group anymore, or have I totally lost sight of them? Yeah, because I went ahead. Yeah, you went ahead further. Give me a perception check. Twenty-three. Jesus Christ! You still see them, but they're evidently they're they're still standing there having this conversation. They're a little bit smaller, for distance-wise. They have not moved yet. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna sniff the track. Is it cl is it fresh? Is it close? Is it is it like a recent track or is it? Give me an investigation check. Ooh, three. Damn, fucking don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> yeah, I'm look. gonna. I'm gonna follow the track. Ooh, Ray, move. Go quietly. Track. How far? How, like I won't. How long go, do you want to? How long do you want to follow like, this track for? I. I would. I it if I lost. Um, I'm going to keep going and I'm going to get as close as I possibly can without losing sight of the group. <laughs> or, oh, and, you're going to lose you know, sight because it, go, it goes off, off the oh, trail. Oh, it just goes ways. off? Okay. It goes off okay. the trail ways. You will lose sight of the group. I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to, I guess I'll just take a mental note of the track and I'll wander back, wander back to the group as they. But I like they were stopped, right? They so I would have this conversation. So well, pick, I would, we'll, I would spend your... as much time investigating that track as it would take for them to stop talking and start walking, and then maybe get to point where they're like starting to pass me, and I gotta like catch up to them, and then I'll and maybe I'm like scurrying up to, so maybe maybe I spend like ten minutes. Yeah, uh, as you're scurrying back up, uh, we'll come back to the group. What are y'all still talking about? You <laughs> muted. You muted on Zoom. Did we see him do this rigmarole around the trail or no? Um, no, because y'all engaged in conversation. So this was he was doing all that while you were having a conversation. So he's probably coming to tell into that conversation that you were having earlier. Okay. But he's coming up from behind us now, correct? Did he come up from behind you? No. He came up he from went. where? Did he? I thought no, he, he's said in he was waiting for us to pass, and then he was going to catch up to our group. No, no. He was scouting ahead. Yes. Oh, where you? And then okay. I thought he was staying there where he saw the tracks until we passed him and then he was going to But catch you guys up. have stopped to have your conversation, so while you're having conversation, he was doing that. That's right. I'm I'm back in with the group. Um I'm in it. Um I'm looking for 
I would probably go to um, to Zorpo, and I would just whisper. I would just be. I would just whisper to Zorpo. I'd be like, "Owlbear tracks." Oh my. Um. Yeah, friends. Was, shh, shh. Oh, okay. Shh. <laughs> and then uh... I I start gesturing like trying to mime an owl bear like as a little as a little two foot kobold. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, that will require a performance check. Oh yeah, this is gonna be great. <clears throat> That's a nine. <laughs> it is uh, vaguely reminiscent of a creature that has claws. Um, you're not really getting across the size so much. You you definitely Zorpo looking at Tags would definitely get the feel that Tags is getting pretty excited about the potential of maybe chasing this thing. I I just got like I'm 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 a little fidgety. You know I want to go. I I think you should tell Grimora if you want to catch this. A little help, a little, go, a little help will go a long way. <clears throat> yeah, I'm. I am. I. I am. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna like. I'm gonna scurry over to Grim in like a not. I'm just kind of like try to be subtle, but you know, uh, kobold to kobold here. I'm just gonna same. I'm gonna whisper like, "Hey, pst, owl bear tracks. Zorbo's oh. in on it." Oh. oh. Which way? Which way? <laughs> I'm just gonna like I'm just gonna like subtly gesture, but like with my I'm just like it's that way. Let's get an egg. <laughs> uh, I will definitely scare off with him. <laughs> <laughs> it would be going? delicious. Where so are you guys going? Okay. It seems the small ones are they have an, a, a new agenda. Zorpo, Is Zorpo Mora, still with tag. us? Or did Zorpo and all all three of the kobolds wander? Did they take Oh, we didn't leave. Up? We're we're in the group. We're we're yeah, walking here in this the conversation. Group. What are you guys doing? What'd you find, Tags? <clears throat> Nothing. Nothing. Grimora, Don't worry Zorpo, about it. What are we doing? Well, are we following Jean to this town? We're still stopped. We haven't moved yet. Oh. Are, are we what, done with this little Zorbo? convo? What are we? What are you doing? What's Tags talking about? Uh, well, come this way. I'll show you. <laughs> Can I roll insight? Sure. 17. Are you trying to hold back your excitement there, Tags? Uh, uh, I will re-divert the site. Uh, I, I will re-divert the excitement into pretending to be excited about, like, a rare fruit that I just found. Uh, you get the opinion that he's excited about something. Um, he seems to be gesturing about a fruit of some kind, but that is not what you're thinking. He... You, you've known Tags for a couple of months now. Uh, you, you think he found something he wants to go hunt? Well. Vestris? Gene, um, you mind a detour? It seems our lizard friends would like to go find something. They get very one-sided. One-track-minded. All right, Gene, let's go. You, I would highly recommend you come with, because it seems like you have uh, a party of followers that like your attention. Maybe safer. What have I got myself into? Yeah. Fine. Why? What are you guys searching or looking at? A mystery. Why? Yeah, getting the truth out of them is is fruitless. I'm just walking up the trail, owl bear tracks. Just walking around. I'm <laughs> just a Are you We're guys just following next me? To these tracks. <laughs> Can I you investigate? Guys... What, where, yeah, go ahead and give me an investigation. Yeah. 
And the, the whole time Zarko's just... 17. Those are definitely not strange fruit tracks. Um, those are... Um, there, there's some kind of tracks... Um, you kind of think they're they're bear-like. Uh, I'm not sure if you've had much experience with owl bears before, but this is a large creature. Tags? I'm strutting. Does your fruit have legs, Tags? <laughs> I'm just... I'm I'm marching forward. Is this is this in the direction of the town that we're going, or is this a total <laughs> wrong direction side quest? Entirely tangential. <laughs> hey, well, uh, what, what is he looking at? Like... I, I I scurry up to to Gina and I just go, "It's an owl bear." <laughs> Do I know what that is? Uh, Gene, you would definitely know what owl bears are. They, they're, yeah, you've seen them around. Let's not go after those. Those are dangerous. What? Yeah. But think about it. We could trade it in town. Someone could get hurt, or maimed, <laughs> or even better, killed. Can we go to town, please? I would like to go home. <laughs> what did what did Zorpo tell you, Gene? Owl bear. An owl bear. An owl bear. <laughs> they, they, they're normal around here, but they're not to be messed with. How Especially many sets of tracks did we see? Just the one, or was there like a, like a small family? What are we doing? You can roll me a survival check. Twenty-one. <laughs> How many is old? Uh, so you, you're starting to look around. There was definitely the mains that attracts that were kind of leading from the road. But now that we're a little bit further in your boat, you know, 15 minutes off the side of the road now, uh, you're starting to see at least a distinct set of two more tracks. One of them is smaller. So three total? The original and two additional? Yeah. Hmm. So on one hand, there's a smaller set of tracks so we can get a baby owl bear and we could keep it with us <gasps> a pet no 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 they're very dangerous we just have to remove no. its parents <laughs> and then Thanks. we can keep it gene is going to orphan the poor child no we're going to adopt gonna... him immediately i mean i guess <gasps> orphan, family we could borrow him gene from is going to turn away and walk back to the road and head to he's not messing with an owl bear <laughs> What say you, Festerus? Well, I say that something Goodbye. that leaves tracks so big must obviously hunt large prey, and large prey means more playthings for my collection, so uh, what's the harm in taking a peek at what we're derailed from? However, we should probably not let this gene person wander too far away, lest she forget about the debts she owes us. Shall we tie her up? Good luck! Jean. But what if that thing comes back for her and she is tied up? What? What say you come with us? No, I am not messing with the No. Healing. You don't have to orphan these this owlbear. I am not. You just have to be there. <laughs> I am not helping you with the owlbear. There's two. Two adults, right? Two adults, one Maybe. child. Yeah, no. Just stand off. If we need heals, just be there like we were there for you. And that would be pretty cool. What are we going to be now? You said we weren't going to be staying at your place, right? So you're not going to be offering us any food, any I anything. Am... So yes, I am. We need okay. to hunt for food. Okay, okay. time out. I'm offering you lodging at the Majestic, which is an inn that I can give you freaking... Have you ever eaten an owlbear, Gene? No. Is I'm not gonna. No. I'm just gonna go home. You guys have fun with that. I'm not dealing with an owlbear. You don't have to coin. deal with anything. We'll deal with it. 
Okay, you guys have fun with that. I'll be at my home. Probably with you. Bye. I'll give you a gold coin, Gene. Did you do a gold coin? No. No. What about a pretty, please? No. Oh, okay. All right. How about Gene has to make a wisdom saving throw? Uh. Try persuading. Is it a magic spell or a magical effect? It is a spell. Aha. And you're not going to like it. I got a 29. Okay, you are not a bunny. Yeah. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> I'd like, can I? I'd like to roll persuasion against Sheen. <laughs> I'm gonna guess. Go right ahead. Twenty-two. Uh, what do I need? To roll? I think a will save. Not a will save. Wisdom save. Sorry. Thinking Pathfinder. Oh, plus ten. <laughs> Twenty-eight. Oh, no! He tried to persuade a cleric that has a high wisdom. <laughs> no. All yeah, right. that's that. That doesn't work on me. Nice try, though. Do you mind just hanging out until we get back? It'll be like maybe thirty minutes. No. <laughs> We're already late as it is. You want to get home and get some food and stuff? Or to my to yell, drive you. you. Want food and stuff and settings? You need to get there before dark. What right. if these owl bears hurt some of the people traveling in and out of your city? As long as we don't mess with them, they're fine. They'll leave us alone. What if they're, they're what if the owl bears have this book? They do not, probably. It's keep them dead. So, no. But you never know. <laughs> until we find out. No one has seen it. Sometimes we have to fuck around and find out. What if it's lost? I fucked around and find out, and it did not end well. No thank you again. It did end well. You found us. You found out that Irene about. is a merciful god. And very helpful. No. 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 For the sake of adventure, no. Jane, think about it. I've had enough of it. Yeah, I'm good. You could have just a little more. Okay, I fucked around and found out, and I lost people a lot. I'm good. No, thank you. That was only eight months ago. I'm fine. I just what if you lose your new friends here? Friends, you guys don't want to be friends. You're more asking for debt to be paid, so you're more inconvenient. Small blood debt. To be fair, he did give you a bit of a transfusion. I didn't ask for that. I was unwilling, and you're not getting my blood. It's not happening. Today. Ever. A week from now, who knows? Nope. All right. You might have some spare just laying around. I don't know. All right, that's it. I'm done with this competition. Bye! That you would be more surprised what... Some of your blood in an experienced necromancer's possession can do for you. You really want to fuck around and find out? I don't think you really want to fuck around and find out. Two small owl bears and a smaller one at that. You don't know how big an owl bear. They're not small. They're not small. How big are they? Uh, as y'all see Zorpo like waving her hand like she's in class. Yes, Zorpo. Well, if you don't fuck around and find out, you don't learn anything. I have enough okay. to <laughs> done with the adventure. I'm doing what I'm doing. I didn't really need to deal with any of this undead shit, but it just keeps happening. And I found you guys on accident. I would like to go home, get some rest, and help my followers. So, excuse me. Gene, if you had a small owlbear and it turned to a big owlbear, this owlbear can help you fight the undead when we leave. Because it sounds like you need the help. You could even probably ride it. She's so completely walk ignoring you and an walking hour, down the road. Away from town. Zorpro just kind of like scurries after trying to keep up. 
Well, I guess we better get moving then. All right, Tags, Gamora. I guess we'll have to give up this Yeah, month. I'll I'll just run back. I, yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't mean to derail. I, I don't, I'm just following clues. I oh, guess. no, you're fine. No, it fits your character. It's fine. It's all good. You're good, man. Yeah. Okay. Is, I'll just, be, be this careful. is part of D&D. And yeah, you yeah, it's like here's an owl bear track. I was like, it's okay, <laughs> you know. Ju Jugen so. will lead you down a side track at the drop of a hat. Be yeah, careful. and I'll go. I let those are the best ways mm -hmm. to go. Like, uh, hell who yeah. knows what kind of secrets we had prepared? That's you what. Know? I, so I, I don't. Yeah, I guess I don't want to split the group. So. You guys know, most of y'all know me as a DM. If we go to sign on side check, I weave it into the story at some point, somehow. So, but anyway, as we continue forward onward to Yildravia, I think that's where we pick up next time. As you're reaching the city. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out. Uh, let's go through. Again, as a reminder, uh, Zafoon, since you gave over $50... You get to have up to four bracelets and a um, sticker. Uh, and just, uh, you know how to reach me. Uh, reach me with your uh, address and I'll mill them out to you. Um, uh, we're about to do the giveaway. So go ahead and exclamation point ticket to enter into the giveaway as we do a round from everybody. So is oldie. Uh, hey, I'm Azold. Um, I am not yet a streamer, but I will be starting soon. So, yay, you'll see me online, maybe. Uh, that's it for me. Silver? Uh, hi, I'm Silver Wolf. I usually stream on Fridays, but I'm on hiatus for a while until I get my health under control. But thank you guys again for your donations for, to help with the charity. And can't wait to see you guys next week. Uh, Nihilish? Hello, hello, I'm Nilish. Um, I will be seeing you guys next week as well. Uh, thanks for all of the donations, guys, and let's keep at it. All right. Uh, Summit. Hey. Uh, yo, this was fun. This was fun. I gotta freshen up my D and D knowledge and stuff, but this is cool. Um, I uh, I I'm in the middle of moving, so I'm usually on every day, trying to get back on track as soon as possible doing workshop stuff and uh i'll be back but yeah painting models online and hanging out thank you guys uh herman hey guys thanks for stopping by i uh, appreciate you guys sticking around i had a good time uh nerd holla uh Thank you, everybody, for your support and being here to watch us and, and all the shenanigans that we will be getting up to over the course of the next month. Uh, I am on three days a week, and uh, I am on hiatus for my D&D campaign to do this uh, for the month of October, but uh, Black Sheep will be starting up again in November. And the famous cleansing ring. Hello, Cleansing Rain, playing Festerus in this uh, charity campaign, enjoying it for a first session. It was really, really fun. I'm really liking the crew that you've assembled for this and very much looking forward to the rest of the times that we get to play together. Uh, furthermore, thank you all for the donations tonight to put us already at that 150. Let's really try and push to hit some of those later goals so that this can be a great success for a great reason and look forward to next Wednesday. All right. Uh, with that being said, I think I'm going to move and put the, like I did last year, put the stretch goals Ashley on stream. Um, still, you have the QR code up, but I think it's kind of harder. I think people really want to see it as they're chiming in, uh, tuning in. Um, I lost my train of thought. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Uh, if you want to catch us live uh, in any of my games live, head over to Twitch. That's in the, uh, in the, description down below as well uh episode two of this will be next week wednesday at 6 p.m because the scheduling conflicts mainly for me because i 
have a rotating schedule and I don't have the same dies off every week. So, so next week, market calendar, 6 p.m. Uh, uh, Wednesday, uh, 6 p.m. PST time. And that giveaway would be for one of the either Carlac or Shadowheart, whoever the winner wins, they get to choose, and I'll mill it out to them. Uh, everybody can apply for that one. Uh, I don't mind sending that overseas. Uh, I called dibs on Ragey Girlfriend. <laughs> but uh, that being said, uh, we're about to do the giveaway, so please enter in if you're not already. Exclamation point ticket, and I'll do the drawing here. Give you about a minute. Uh, anything else we need to talk about? Uh, join a Discord. I, I guess just, I didn't say this. We just did a recent purge of our Discord. We get all the inactive people. Um, they're not banned, so nothing personal. Uh, and if they had positions in the Discord, I demoted them and then or kit them one or the other. Um, uh, it doesn't nothing personal. Just rejoin if you want to come back and be active. We're trying to turn the Discord back around and be more active again. So make sure uh, if you want to come back. Just free to come back. We didn't ban anybody. We just kind of get cleaned up the Discord a little bit. Uh, it's like kind of a yearly thing anyway. So, with that being said, let's uh, roll the giveaway. And you have to be in chat. <laughs> Silver Wolf, you have won. All righty. Just message me which pack you want and your email. Alrighty, with that being said, we'll raid out. We're gonna raid into JR. He's also in our Order to Goblet stream on Sundays. So we'll be back this Sunday for that. Next time we'll be live will be Friday for Dragonlance. We're finishing up that creepy location. So that should be fun. You'll see Cleanser Rain there along with Nihilish. You'll be there for that one on Friday night. So thank you guys. Love you very much and uh, see you then. Have a good night. I need to add this to my stream deck, dang it. Drawing closer, no time left to 